I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen for September 17th. Start with public comment. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? I do. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Chief Ayotte and the brave Hampton firefighters who responded to the emergency in Lawrence and Andover. That was a terrible fire and situation. So uh, we are very thankful for our brave men and very grateful for their service. Um, and I appreciate, I appreciate them going down there. Jim? Yeah, I'm a ditto on the fire department. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys did a great job. You're down there helping out the other communities. And I'm sure if we were in trouble, they'd be up here helping us. And condolences to the people in, in Lawrence and Andover, North Andover. That was terrible. Yeah. And I'm glad I don't have Columbia gas. <clears throat> Rick. Yeah, I'll have to say the same. I was going to um, Portsmouth um, for some business, and right when I was going, the fire trucks were uh, yeah. going out onto 101, and, and I thought, oh my God, they must be going to Lawrence, and sure enough, they got on 95, and we were right behind them, and it was moving to see that, yeah. that we were able to help. Very good. So we have the approval of the minutes for September 10th, 2018, non-public session. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Aye. Unanimous. Oh, yes. And by the way, we do have Selectman Regina Bonds. She is, she is off at a, a conference, but she is here with us on the phone. Hi, Regina. Hey, Rusty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> do you have any announcements in the community calendar? Um, no, you just did it for me. And I also wanted to thank our New Hampshire DOT because I got a nice letter invitation to their uh, public hearing on the bridge uh, for September 26th, and I thought that was very nice. They sent a letter out to my house. Yeah, I got <coughs> one. I do have one comment on the consent agenda before it gets approved. All righty. Well, we're going to start with the consent agenda. We have a road closure for a block party on uh, Colby and Wentworth. We have use of town property, the Ashworth Ave, Church Street, and Island Path parking lots for Smutty Nose Rock Fest, half marathon race on 1017. And we also have a grant for the Hampton Fire Department. Uh, it's uh, awarded to the assistance grant to firefighters at Hampton Rescue that was applied for to replace 16 radios, two base radios, and 40 pages. Total of this grant is $83,416. So that's questions on the consent agenda. I will so move the consent agenda. Um, Mr. Oh. Chairman, I'm being told that the Smutty Nose Rock Fest is September 30th. Um, Shows October 7th. I just want to make sure that. Date of event, September 30th. September 30th is what I have on the application. Uh -oh. Okay, so you are right. So we will amend the consent agenda. Thank you for catching that, Regina. To September. No problem, thanks. To 9.30. I won't take credit for that. It was someone else. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. As long as you brought it up, that's fine. So with that, is our motion to accept the consent agenda as amended? I, I will so move. Second? I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Aye. So, thank you, Chief. Thank you. All righty. Uh -oh. Appointments. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I did. On the use of the town parking lots, I want to bring something up. Start bringing it up under old business. Not. It's not specifically to that. This, but we can bring it up under old business. Okay, just thank in you. general. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. Appointments. Chris Jacobs and Jen Hale, the director and deputy director of DPW. Wow. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm going to stick with the, or try and stick with the agenda that was posted, and, and that is to go through the department update first, and then the uh, uh, number of items that uh, we'd sent over in the last couple of weeks. Um, it's pretty extensive, so 
I'm going to try and move right through this. Uh, as far as the department's going, um, great. Uh, we've only had one tr uh, tr internal transfer so far, and that was uh, Brian Beacott. He's been with us for almost 20 years. He's now the solid waste collection working foreman. Um, there were two people in the department that were interested in it, and uh, in the end, um, we moved Brian into that position. Uh, the Lafayette Road Drainage and Sidewalk Replacement Project um, is currently being engineered by Wright Pierce. Um, we'll have, <coughs> we've been told that we'll have preliminary plans by the end of October with final uh, design for bid documents mid-January. This is something we'd uh, kind of like to put out, well, we would like to put it out in the spring uh, for starting in mid-April. Uh, take a break through the core part of the summer and then um, pick it up in the fall to, to continue to move the project along. Um, Funding-wise, uh, uh, I know it doesn't say it here, but uh, that was the one and a half million that was um, put into the capital reserve fund for road construction, and that's what will be allocated to this project. Mill Pond Dam, we're very pleased to tell you that um, the construction is uh, proceeding rapidly, even more rapidly than I thought it was going to go. Um, the concrete work for the center uh, control structure is in. Uh, I know the footing, I was there the day the footing was poured uh, about two weeks ago. So the walls are up and that's kind of a linchpin or a, the key pin to the project. Hands Lane sewer replacement, the project has begun. Uh, initial core to the connection manhole was made and uh, they've already put in 200 feet and two of the Ys um, where the, the sewer connections would actually be. Project will continue with the replacement of the sewer ma main and then the rest of the sewer services and side drainage. Uh, again, as a reminder, the base pavement will be in by mid-November and the final pavement being placed in the spring. So um, people will have to uh, <coughs> uh, keep that in mind when driving through that area. Uh, asset management software, we continue to use it every day, uh, more and more, all the various departments, they're even whipping me into shape. Um, the uh, tablets that we have has proven to be a very efficient way uh, of doing our field work. A number of the staff um, have really gravitated to that. Um, again, better than I thought. Um, there has been literally no pushing on our ha behalf. It's, uh, they're uh, grasping it onto it uh, on their own. Uh, we're going to be attaining, uh, attending training sessions to better utilize the different features the software has. And we're looking forward to be using the software and we'll update our CIP plan. Um, the system is a, for those that aren't aware, it's a uh, data tracking, asset tracking, so that uh, as signs are replaced, manholes are repaired, culverts are replaced, uh, sewer connections, things of that nature, there's a um, overriding system to make sure that uh, uh, some accountability and also uh, a record of where we've been. And a couple other things I'll let Jennifer. Uh, talking about the Church Street Force Main relocation project, uh, as many of you know, the temporary Force Main was completed in July and has been placed online and uh, continues to be tested weekly. Uh, we're using it as needed and will continue to do so all the way through the installation of the two new Force Mains that uh, were improved at the end of August. Uh, since that vote, where we received the approval, uh, we have issued the award to bid to Rivoli Construction and we have our pre-construction kickoff meeting this Thursday. Uh, it's expected that work will begin uh, on the project shortly thereafter. Uh, we will begin at the wastewater treatment facility working our way backwards up uh, Tide Mill. That's with the gravity sewer line and while we're doing that uh, we'll be waiting for the PVC pipe that's needed for the force mains. So uh, this will allow us to continue working as we wait on the lead time to get those pipes. Um, we do expect that the project will be completed by Memorial Day 2019 as we had intended uh, all along. Uh, in addition to that, we have been working with Wright Pierce uh, from the uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant Facility Study. We have uh, did three planning meetings so far. Each of those meetings have been broken down into those critical components that were identified in the facility study. Uh, we've worked through each room, room by room, piece of equipment by piece of equipment, uh, developed our plans 
uh, for how we want to address the critical failures uh, and critical needs. And we basically are looking to shoot for a scheduled enter into the preliminary design for those features um, by basically late spring, uh, looking to get bids out and uh, getting that uh, into construction. I can add to that. Um, on a, based on an email from uh, Selectman Barnes, I did attach to this report the, f the meeting minutes for the first three planning meetings that we had with Wright Pierce. Um, is, a, is you know prudent to disclose where we're going, what we're doing. I also attached to it the uh, one of the planning meetings for the um, force main re relocation. It was a coordination meeting back in early September. So trying to keep the, the board and, and members of the public up to date on Excellent. where the department is with these projects. Go back. Uh, the next project that we were talking about, uh, well, we had been talking about was Bicentennial Park. Yeah. As you know, the uh, studies were done that showed that the yes. wall itself was in uh, critical need Hold of redesign, it not being embedded. Oops. Oh, Regina, home. you there? Uh, oh, we got to recall Regina. She, we've lost her on the phone. So right. hold on just a minute. Sure. Technology. <laughs> yeah, it kills you. <laughs> Could be her cell phone. Yeah. Could be. Thank you. I'm here. No, okay. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Regina, what part did you lose us at? Don't worry about me. You just go on with your report. All righty, all righty. Uh, Bicentennial Park, as you know, we did the study. Uh, that study showed that uh, we needed a new wall design. <coughs> that design was funded. It is sitting shelf ready uh, with the uh, direction of whether we should be putting it out to bid uh, for potentially a March 2019 warrant. Um, I leave this on here for something to discuss with the board, but just to let you know that mm -hmm. uh, it is there. Uh, we, if we did want to put it out to bid, we want to do that by the end of September, early October, uh, to make sure we get the right dollar amounts uh, put into any Warren article that uh, goes ahead. All right, Chris, back to you. Back to me. Always exciting leaf collection. I know a lot of people <laughs> actually do look forward to that or, or, or look to have the question answered. Um, it's typically scheduled that first full week of November. Um, again, I'll be directing the staff to start that on November 5th, uh, day before the federal election. Uh, <laughs> the collection start, will start on the Monday route and continues to follow all the routes till all the bagged leaves are collected. Uh, so not everyone, if you're on the Tuesday or Wednesday route, you get an extra day or two. Um, I always get asked every year what happens if the leaves drop later or you get one tree that drops early in the year and the rest drop later. Um, if you bag them up, just call the Public Works Department. We put them on a list. Uh, we'll take uh, you know, a secondary crew, a secondary sweep around town and pick up uh, those additional uh, leaves. Um, we would like to keep it to that week, but we understand uh, Mother Nature uh, dictates really what we do. Um, trees, so far this year I've removed uh, 41 trees around town. Um, we've already identified about a dozen more uh, for next year and I'm working with uh, the rec department for work around um, Tuck Field. So um, if people are calling, I'm basically telling them that I can't take down any additional trees this year uh, unless it's uh, a true emergency. Uh, the manager and I discussed uh, uh, branch in question over on uh, by the Tuck uh, Museum um, that's considered an emergency and we're having uh, someone in to take that down. Um, flashing crosswalks, the one up between uh, Logan's Run and the name of the hotel that escapes me. Best Western. Thank you. The Best Western. Uh, that did get damaged last winter. We do have another one coming in to replace that. There was some confusion with our vendor. He thought we were trying to order a whole new location, um, but we've since got that straightened out. So <clears throat> I know it's on order. and We'll be coming back in. Um, we're actively working on potholes and pavement r repairs. Uh, we can continue to make some temporary repairs for those things that are called in. 
Uh, crack ceiling will occur late, later this month at the lower ends of Winniconnet and High Street as well as the older section of Toll Farm Road. Additional areas will be treated as funding permits. Uh, as a reminder, we are aware that there, that there are roads that are in tough shape. We do have plans and our goals uh, do include fixing the infrastructure beneath them prior to paving. Particular uh, street that comes up a lot, uh, question wise, is Lock, Lock Road. And when we explain yes. to people that we have a, uh, we know it's in rough shape, but we have uh, plans to replace this, actually go to sewer design in 19 and replacement in 20 uh, along that line. They're uh, <clears throat> somewhat understanding. Um, we also have plans for Molten Road, that's in our CIP. And as we said, Ann's Lane is currently under construction. Um, wastewater treatment plant operations. Again, I have attached to the back of the report um, this uh, summation. S uh, sorry for the uh, small print. I'm trying to pound seven pounds of information on a six pound sheet. Um, overall, the wastewater plant, pr uh, what they processed uh, is slightly down. Um, Sorry, slightly up. I'm reading my numbers backwards. We're 671 million gallons so far this year. The same period in in uh, 17, we're only 667. So literally, uh, only a matter of five five million gallons. Uh, the total amount of wet wet sludge being transported to the Rochester landfill is down by 92 tons. Uh, it was 2187 tons over the first eight months of 17. And this year we're only at 2095. What that correlates to is the amount of septage that's been received at the plant this year is down by 255,000 gallons. Um, we were uh, the same period last year. We were 1,338,000, and this year only a million and 82,000. Um, we did get an, an awful lot of additional septage last year because. Uh, the Epping facility had to shut down for a period of time, um, and that's where you're seeing the result and now in reduced sludge being brought to us and redu or reduced septage being brought to us and therefore it generates less sludge. Um, well, as I said, I've attached the monthly report. Uh, the other thing that's pretty, uh, become pretty active now is the permit renewal. Um, the since uh, 2007, we've been operating basically without a permit. Uh, the, there's a continuing resolution in each one of the permits issued by the EPA, and it says uh, no changes, just keep going until we send you a new one. Um, there's been an effort amongst the public works directors and um, the DES people at the state level to for the state to take over the uh, uh, idea of issuing the permits, the operational permits to the wastewater treatment plants. Uh, um, and it appears in s some respects that that's actually uh, uh, moving towards that way because uh, we had our first conference call on September 5th with uh, three members of the state uh, permitting uh, group and that's the first time I can ever remember that happening. Normally we had all those discussions with the EPA. But um, either way that process is moving forward. Um, Things like what we're doing at the plant currently and what we plan to do in the future are also uh, part of that discussion. Um, lastly, uh, transfer station operations. Um, some people are aware that uh, we've gone through an in-depth process with waste management over the last 45 days to look at the rate of contamination within our recycling stream. Um, Due to fluctuations in the market, uh, mainly the largest consumer of recyclables being the uh, China, country of China, they instituted a rate, uh, a low, uh, basically a contamination rate less than 1%, meaning that they didn't want um, recyclables that they then had to uh, cast off a big portion and send into their own landfills. Um, so they've tightened up their market in turn waste management had to tighten up uh, their audits and um, we worked with them they conducted I think 11 audits yep. mm -hmm. and um, at first they thought they were going to hit us with a 25% contamination rate but it went all the way down to 14% um, 
We had some loads that uh, even didn't even have 1% contamination. One of the major things that uh, we're going to have to be working on um, within the department is we've put in writing here, we're going to try and get it done through uh, October is, um, and, and people at home can please take this to heart, um, waste management in their operating facility down there, plastic bags, the trash can liners that we put in our trash bags are a major problem for them. It gums up the works. It stops the process on a daily basis. These bags wrap themselves around all the gears. Having said that, also, if the bags come in and they haven't already broken up by the time they hit the floor, a lot of times waste management, because they've got so much coming at them, they'll literally say, that's trash. Uh, they won't take the time, especially if they can't see into the bag. So when we say that we would like um, single stream recycling, we want the recycling in those roadside carts without any bags. If you want to, you know, I do it at home. I have a white bag that I lines my recycling can. But when I go to the transfer station, I give them all the recyclables, keep the bag. Yeah. Um, we've got to start doing the same thing. It's, it's, it's a major problem for them. Um, and that is part of why our contamination rate was so high. It wasn't that we were it was really literally trash in the recycling as much as it was contaminated recycling. Uh, they can't handle garden hoses. I know it's a great idea to, because you think it's rubber, they can't take them. Um, there is a list. Uh, so right now, uh, we put the website under what we're calling reconstruction. And right under the transfer station and the recycling uh, sections of the DPW website, Right under that notice that we're rebuilding the pages, you'll see a website to waste, uh, excuse me, a link to waste management's website. Uh, on their website, and we put it right to the page it will bring you, it says, what can you recycle? There is a lot of information there. It even explains to you, you know, when you think paper, all the different types of paper you can recycle from magazines to your bulk mail to your, uh, you know, papers when you're done like this. But what they don't want you to confuse is, you know, the used pizza box with all the grease oh, on it. Oh. Uh, that's not paper. Um, that's not even considered cardboard. That's what we mean by contamination. And the waste management uh, website is very, it gives you examples uh, of each of the things and it tells you why it's a problem if you're ever wondering. Good. So for right now, we're linked there. You also can call our office if there's any questions. But what about paper towels? Uh, the paper towel itself unused. <laughs> can be recycled, but not if you've cleaned up oil spill or wiped your hands with uh, butter, uh, those type of things. Yeah. That That's food contaminant uh, that they don't uh, want on uh, the paper products. So any paper with food contaminants? Yes, is, you do, is. is not recyclable. Uh, just like every so often, and I think uh, when we started recycling way back when, someone would say, well, you know, you can put your um, shredded paper in a clear bag. You know, there's a lot that makes that iffy. Your definition of clear, the thin, the, we're saying please, no bags. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if anything, mm -hmm. that is the most. You can do a paper bag, but not plastic, plastic. bags. Yeah. Uh, I think at, to take home that is the most important thing to remember what to recycle, but also that the waste management website uh, can really walk you through what can and can't be done. It's broken up into five sections. Uh, from glass to aluminum to paper to cardboard uh, to uh, plastics, if I didn't say that first. So. Sure. With that, we will roll out, just so you know, on to Channel 22, uh, do one of the email blasts. Once we have our page rebuilt with our attachments, uh, we'll make sure they get that out to everybody. All right. Um, questions on the report, or do we move on to the individual items? Regina, do you have any questions? No, uh, thank you so much. So it looks like the recycling is going to get a little bit more strict, and we have to make sure, because I know I did the same thing, that your recyclables are just in there loose, not in a plastic bag. Correct. Okay. Okay. Mary Louise, right, so far on their report. Great report, and I like the format. This is tremendous for, for a reference. Um, I've had questions from a couple of people. Uh, are we going to stop using hard arts way 
uh, because you named two streets at Public Works. Would you just explain that to the public to reassure them? Yeah, no, um, Hard Arts Way is not going away. Um, but within the Public Works complex, we, we named the, uh, the major loop uh, Public Works Way. Um, the little cross court that's in front of the wastewater treatment plant, um, McGrath Court, I believe, after uh, mm -hmm. Levitt McGrath. Levitt McGrath, who the plant was uh, is in its entirety, is named after. The major reason for doing it was uh, twofold. First was safety. Um, it occurred to me that if there's someone um, in a building using their cell phone and they were happen to call 911, and we do have people there that are, that are by themselves. The, there's a lab worker on Saturday and Sunday mornings. At times there may be a mechanic by himself in the, in the building, uh, out in the carpenter shed. So the idea is that uh, we'd assign, using the 911 system, we'd assign a building number for each major structure in the facility so that in the event someone needs a police, fire, or ambulance, they can say Public Works Way or 11 Public Works Way, that's the number of the building. To that effort, we were going to have 24 by 36 inch uh, metal signs with the number clearly on it mounted to the side of each one of the buildings so that these first responders, when they come in, they can know where uh, that person was or they, the caller can have relayed that information to the 911 operator. So it really was a safety issue. The second issue is uh, we get um, probably five to six deliveries a day. And they were choking up the front office. A lot of the deliveries either need to go to the mechanics or they need to go over to wastewater. And some of them needed to go to the transfer station. Um, the only thing we get delivered basically is paper. Um, so in an effort so that these deliveries would go to where they're needed uh, and people didn't, the various department heads didn't have to wonder where, when and where their order was coming in, that was the other reason for doing it. Um, Good. So for clarity. So yeah. entire way isn't going away. You it just is not have going the two away. new right. two new streets. Uh, uh, now at the bottom of page two, wastewater treatment plant facility upgrades. Um, have we are we having um, have we ordered the sewer pipes for the actual sewer project? And I remember seeing something about a 15 week wait to get the new pipes well, the how are we doing on ordering the the pipes now that everything's been approved <coughs> we have to sign a con we've, well, we've signed a contract okay with Rivoli construction this has to do with the uh, the force main re replacement right the work that's going to go on 101 that uh, high density polyethylene pipe has somewhere from a 15 to 20 week yeah. lead time meaning that if they had ordered it the first week of September <laughs> it'll be here for Valentine's Day February <laughs> February 3rd uh. um, pursuant to how all these contracts are run uh, we don't own it or even begin to pay for it until it starts to get delivered to the to the job site and at that the contract documents talk about how we pay 50% until such time it's actually used and in the ground it actually works out reasonably well for us in that um, they'll start on the pipe with a that has the real short lead time uh, right in the plant itself and march down Tide Mill Road and by the t and they can also start on the other end uh, by the Church Street pump station uh, but that work that needs to be done on 101 it'll actually be done in the in the best season the February March April season and that's and then it'll all wrap together you're not worried about a hold up no in getting the pipes to you not not in the slightest there's okay. enough work to do in the in the interim. Okay. Um, then on page three, um, the leaf collection. Can we send the leaves to China? Are they recyclable? We'll ask. <laughs> um, flashing crosswalks. Um, is do you have any pull with the state to get them to get crosswalks done in time on Route One A? I like your idea here. 
from the hotel on Logan's Run side of Lafayette Road and and a new setup. I think it's great to have those crosswalks. But I think that the the best way to say what we're doing with our flashing crosswalks is looking uh, where we do have control mm. versus fighting where we don't have control. Uh, we put, as you'll see in the report, next year's proposed budget that will come before you in the budget committee and ultimately our voters is realizing that these do have a cost associated with them, but that if we spread it out, you know, over the certain places and look at the areas that are most used where we've done in the past, there at Logan's Run, which they call a mid-block crossing, uh, the Fast Study CVS Galley Hatch, again, a mid-block crossing, and then look at other areas around town where they could be very beneficial, some of them in conjunction with the school, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, where out of their budget they do a yeah. set and we do a set. Uh, th there is an extreme beneficial use for these signs, so focusing on where we can get them yeah. uh, up here is where we're headed. Because crosswalks are important. Um, on page f four, I mentioned to Jen, and she'll share with you, Chris, I'm sure, a, a wastewater, let's see, the, the um, you guys up at Waste Management. The waste recycling. Management. Yeah, I have a uh, little piece that they put on NECN over the weekend, and that might be available to you. And we might be able to show it on Channel 22. I think that would help. Um, trans uh, transfer station operations and recycling. What's going to happen with our carts if we, if our recycling opportunities go down, will it mean more waste in the blue car and the blue carts? And are we going to start having problems because the waste part will balloon? I it's it's that that's one of those real crystal ball questions. I think the situation with with China and um, needing to um, if you will, clean up worldwide our act mm -hmm. um, was probably just a, a long time in coming. But having said that, it's also very apparent that the recycling market is very tenuous. Mm -hmm. um, there needs to be more um, education, planet-wide, not just in Hampton. Mm -hmm. Um, there needs to be more reuse of recycled materials, not mm -hmm. only just by China, but by other here in the United States and other manufacturers. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's recycling and the waste stream is one of those things that it, I'm almost predicting that it's going to change every single year, in, in slight some things slight, and mm -hmm. other things major. Yeah. And um, you know as when I'm 30 years from now, <coughs> I bet, uh, you know, you're going to see less landfills, more reuse. You're going to see more refuse to energy. Yeah, there's a host of number of things that are that are going to change the market. So um, we just say that to our team and our people, we just have to be adaptable. Yeah. But do I think it's ever going to mean no recycling carts? Not at all. Oh, okay. This community has too many seagulls to allow that to happen. <laughs> um, and secondly, I, I think um, the green and the blue sends the message that we are a recycling community yeah. and we need to continue to do that. We just need to tweak it. The segment that on uh, NECN from Waste Management did show uh, a number of places who have shut down mm -hmm. their dumps, basically. And on the leaves, um, some of my trees are losing their leaves because it's been so dry. Yep. So you may have an early, you keep yeah. earlier pickup. Yeah, I know, but this is a great report, and I just right. want to make sure that keep I get moving. everything. I think we're all set, and you'll keep us up to date on your site and Channel 22 if you need to. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Great report. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Jim. Good report. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Jim. Well done. See, I covered um, everything. Oh. One question that I have, and I don't know whether this is, if, you, if I should ask it right now, because where you are talking about the recycling, uh, or if I should wait till you finish your report, okay. but it does have something to do with the both recycling and the trash pickup. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that um, on Sunday afternoon, I went down um, 
Ashworth Avenue, and there are clear violations, and I would like to know what you do when you, when you get them. There was um, one person, in, you know, about halfway down Ashworth Avenue, I don't know whose it was, uh, but they had their trash out and their recycling, but they had, the, you couldn't possibly close the, um, the container because I counted four white bags. Ooh, I saw exactly bags. what you're talking about. I yeah, know exactly first of all, one. it looks so awful, and mm -hmm. I think that that's what we're going to have to approach here, because this should, just shouldn't be allowed. These people should uh, have their uh, ability to leave trash taken away from them. Uh, it looks terrible. Mm -hmm. It was the hot, one of the biggest parts of our weekend, and um, yeah. I would just like to know: Did you pick that up? Would you pick it up, or are you supposed to pick it up? The or well, the, the, the ordinance says no that we're not going to. It was easily two but, feet up. But up, in some up, practicality, up. we do, uh, especially if it's that weekend run. Um, but we've stopped doing the weekend run so that two was, weeks ago. Yeah, okay. so well, last weekend was the last weekend. So that's part of what's going on is every year we have this transition. The week after Seafood Festival is when we end our seven days a week pickup. But yet we get a good weekend or you get the owners coming in and emptying out everything that they've been renting uh, all week. I saw exactly what you saw. And in that case, if we leave it, it doesn't get resolved. But how did these people get warned that that's unacceptable? We was uh, orange past, sticker we've... process that we oh. are you doing the sticker. stickers still? Yeah. We do the orange sticker, and in some cases we have uh, where they haven't abided by what we said. You you have to take them off the back of the curb. You need to not leave them next to the building like this. In one case, we've gone back and we've confiscated them. Mm -hmm. Like we take the carts and we say if you're not going quote unquote play by the rules like everybody else is expected then you don't get the privilege uh, of using them and that's once or twice I yeah. think since yeah. I've yeah. been here. I think that we are um, we're going into the fall we need to have this situation taken care of before we go into the spring mm -hmm. so I'd like to see this put on the agenda of exactly what we're going to be doing about the trash um, particularly things like that. The other, uh, I have an answer for Mary Louise asking about those crosswalks on 1A. That's exactly what the Hampton Beach Area Commission is working on, and it's not going to happen until 2019. Good. Grief. And uh, uh, <coughs> maybe the way they do crosswalks uh, today, they might do, but they're not planning on doing any new intervention of crosswalks until that plan comes into effect. Terrible. Unless you want to go talk to them and see what you can do. <laughs> but I agree, we should do what we have with our streets right. that we have, that we have control of, and maybe set a good example for them. So. I'll try. Can I follow up, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Uh, just on what Rick was saying, I, this morning I came through the beach and uh, down oh, pretty close to between C and B streets. There was a lot of trash left out there from the weekend uh, from, uh. from sales and so on and so forth and it was piled extra high in, in the containers and there was a flock of seagulls spreading it all over uh, all over ashworth uh, avenue so they need to be told to stop that stuff yeah i i think it's just terrible i mean i live there and i just think how can these people mm -hmm. live around here if You're it was right. in my neighborhood it just wouldn't happen because there would be an outrage for my, everyone that lives around there well i agree with jen i mean this weekend is the most a lot of the yeah. restaurants shut down this it weekend. Was happening all summer but, yeah. so i hate yeah. to tell you that well that's what happened yeah. it happens during the summer and then that final one you in the summer you grab one on a saturday you grab one on a sunday so the seagulls get you know five or six hours versus 24 hours to have dinner right there was you a know, restaurant and i won't mention the name but their every one of their trash cans looked disgusting and they were on the sidewalk not right beside it there that's where they're all 24 hours a day they looked awful and to me it's unacceptable i live in hampton beach and i i just can't believe that we have to put up with this i go for a ride in my car and i have to look at that i do go in the morning uh occasionally usually on a monday morning to check for the weekend sometimes i go sunday morning and sometimes i take pictures um and i was going to take pictures there and i'm glad that you did see that 
because that is the type of thing that I'm talking about. It's just so blatant. Well, again, we have some responsible people down there, and we have some irresponsible people. Well, that's what we, why we need and to have this put need, on the agenda, and we need to deal with this, and fine. we need to make so that this does yeah. not continue. You know, they, to they should be required to wash their carts every once in a and while. And the cart should be like what are on these people's um, uh, uh, plan plans that are filed with the planning board that are supposed to be behind barriers so they're not visible from the road. No one, everyone just forgets about that. Yeah, they and do. And that, it's well, all there. Sometimes we need to remind people of that. Well, and no one's what, ever been reminded. No, that's, but that's the problem. We, we probably need so to do. So we need to get a plan where yeah. this is going to happen. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's terrible. I do want to mention that there is going to be a meeting of the Hampton Area Commission yeah. on September 19th which is Wednesday right. and it's at seven o'clock and uh, you know it that's where I think this that is a good question to be presented is that Marston as well uh, no I believe I assume it's going to be here oh okay and, but it's either here or down at the beach <coughs> um, I'll have to check I looked at the thing today and didn't happen to yeah. notice um, and there is a public comment before the meeting you know, uh, I get, oh, go ahead. Uh, well, one question on on the crosswalk lights. I've seen a couple of times people crossing at uh, fast eddies, and the lights haven't been working. But I didn't see whether they hit them or not. So, I mean, we have tested them. Then they are. Uh, when we've gone down, they worked. Okay. And then we get a similar call. Uh, we did have one of the solar panels fail. Okay. Uh, but all under warranty still, so they shipped out a new part. So that may have been. Might have been, that but time I just, during one of I just saw that they were in the Where the battery light. gets low and they can't. Right, they don't yeah. flash. So, But I've actually been there, ready to cross, hit the button, <laughs> and people will sit there and it's like they lurk, like, Did you, are you going to hit it? Are you going to hit it? <laughs> <laughs> so that that was one thing, and uh, Mr. I Chair, guess that's it. Go ahead, Mary Louise. Could I follow up on Rick's comments? Sure. It seems to me in the past that responsible business owners, when they have too much material to fit in their car, hire or find a truck and bring it over to the transfer station right. and then they pay a little fee whatever it's supposed to be over there but wouldn't that be the responsible way yes it would yes it would again we have some responsible business people at the beach and or in town and sometimes not so responsible so and I'm but sure we can that remind them that HBAC meeting is posted. It doesn't actually say on my thing here where it is. Oh, it but should. It's either at the beach, fire station, or the precinct, or it's here. Yeah. You guys have been doing great down at the transfer station. Yeah. Uh, I've stopped in there a couple of times, and uh, you know they they, they they really try to help people out, which yep. I think is is really good. So. All right. So next we have the salt. salt Right. Um, every year the state uh, bids out for salt uh, by region and delivery uh, location, in other words, how far from the pier. Um, this year, Granite State uh, Minerals is the low bidder. Uh, in the past, we have requested and you have approved uh, us tacking on to their bid. Um, so um, I have before you a recommendation to. Um, <coughs> Pursuant to our purchasing policy 17, 718-4, uh, subsection B, to use the state bid uh, at $47, um, we use approximately uh, 1,435 tons of salt uh, every year. Uh, and you should note that the previous winter it was 53.30, so it's down $6 a ton. Doesn't mean I'm going to use more tonnage, it's just those are the facts. Mr. Chairman, do you want a motion to accept the sure. salt? There's a typo in there. It says 2018-2016 winter season. I think you want 2018 to 2019 Correct. winter season. Yeah. But I will so Oh no, no, I think it, where it says Hampton bid, bid number? It says salt bid 2018-2016 winter season. On the agenda. So it should be all on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not what you did. Oh, okay. No, no, right. no. It should say 2019, 2018, okay. yeah. 2019. Okay. So, motion by Mary Louise. With that correction. Second. Second by Regina. All those in favor. Aye. 
Unanimous. Just Thank so you know that 2018-16, the reason it's on the agenda like that, that's the bid number. Ironically, it looks confusing. Oh, but okay. the actual bid number is 2018-16. It's the 16th bid that went out in right. 2018. Oh, how funny. So I should probably okay. put the 20 in front of All right. I just thought that was confusing. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to clarify Okay. There you go. All right, the next sweet. one that we have up is the... Uh, request we previously came before the board and asked for authorization from the wastewater development charge mm -hmm. uh, for a motor for one of our redundant pumps it's one of our backup motors yeah. uh, for the wastewater treatment plant that request was for forty eight thousand uh, dollars in working with Wright Pierce and through the facilities plan and identifying what needed to come first chicken and the egg uh, this motor uh, would be part of the wastewater treatment uh, facilities upgrades uh, so to take that money from there uh, does not make sense at this time so requesting as part one of this uh, to void that expenditure from the wastewater development charge uh, and then while I'm here asking uh, the board to approve the expenditure of 19,700 uh, and that is for two VFDs that we need those are the variable frequency drives that help with the efficiency and run the components uh, one of them is to replace a 20 year old um, VFD to our blowers uh, that's for the aeration tanks and uh, also another one uh, for our uh, activated sludge pump uh, so the request is um, for basically to rescind the expenditure from the wastewater development uh, account 48,000 which was previously known as project M and then to approve an expenditure of 19,700 uh, to purchase the VFDs is this uh, a single stream so purchase. a waiver of section 718-3 uh, is requested as the project was not put out to bid it is over the 15,000 mark but where Stoltz is the sole northeast distributor of the Toshiba Toshiba drives that are what these uh, VFDs are we are asking for the waiver so I need a motion first to rescind the expenditure I, I'll make that motion I'll, I'll second. second all those in favor and I want to hit Jim's Aye. 20 times fast. And I want to, I need a motion to approve the expenditure of 19700 I'll make that motion. Wastewater development charge. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. All right. Uh, the next next one. one on there is. Now, this um, one we understand that's your internal number. It's not. <laughs> yes. It's not the year. Exactly. Right. Okay. Um, as many of you have been waiting and uh, I know we've had a bunch of neighborhood groups come in saying when are we going to get the uh, Kings Highway preliminary drainage design and the Meadow Pond right. and uh, west side of Ashworth flooding studies done well we had a step to do before that uh, and that was to put out a RFQ which is a request for qualifications for uh, responsible and the appropriate engineering firms uh, the department of public works as you know uh, we do multiple types of what you would call engineering you have your wastewater development we do the drainage and sewer systems and pipes in our roads we do our roadways our sidewalks uh, and then we have our coastal um, issues and yeah. concerns the walls the erosion uh, the wetlands the outlets those type of things so Chris and I went back and forth on the best way to do this and we put out the request for qualified engineering firms mm -hmm. um, this went out uh, quite a few months ago but uh, it was quite a process we received eight respondents uh, who were all interested uh, we asked them what they wanted to be qualified for in other words what were their specialties out of four groups the wastewater the roadway the drainage sewer and the coastal uh, they provided full qualifications packages giving us projects uh, that were similar clients that were similar whole nine yards we reviewed them uh, internally in-house with our staff we then narrowed that down uh, to five firms and we spent the time and interviewed with all five of them uh, Fred sat down here with us as we went through each firm they brought in uh, their project managers and uh, we went through with a rating system of what is their applicable experience? What is their ability to form relationships with us? That being a very huge compo uh, mm -hmm. component for our yeah. department is because we have to be able to work them, trust them, and, and speak the same language, basically. Uh, with that base, basically what we have done is we have narrowed it down to four firms that we would like to qualify um, 
basically for their components uh, that they are qualified for, meaning the, any of the engineering services our department sees um, them to be a fit for. So based on their qualifications, interviews, ability to complete services and demonstration of competence in completing projects for other clients, municipalities, the Department of Public Works recommends that the Board of Selectmen authorize the town manager to negotiate on-call contracts for a term of five years with the following firms. Hoyle Tanner & Associates, Malone & Mac Broom, Ty & Bond, and Wright Pierce. The reason we are asking for it in that fashion is that the on-call uh, will provide all their rates, all the terms that we've similarly done with Ty & Bond and Wright Pierce in the past, and as projects become available, all those terms and conditions will already be established. Mm -hmm. It's just a scope of work that Good. will change. So once we get this in place, we will then go uh, to the selected consultant for Kings Highway and uh, the flooding on the west side of Ashworth and develop the scope and write that up and the project will start. So that's the long-winded of how we're getting from A to B. So this gives you flexibility. It certainly does, and it's flexibility in what they call professional services, and we need right. that. A very, very good approach. I will so move that uh, we authorize the engineering services contracts that you have described, uh, which will be administered at the discretion of the manager. For, for the five-year term. For a five-year term. Thank I'll you. Second that. Second. Any other questions? I have, a que I have a question. Go ahead. So it is no direct cost right now related to the town. This is just to enter into contact to determine what the scope is going to be? That is correct. Each one of these firms will provide their terms and conditions along with their billing rates of their professionals. Mm -hmm. And then each project will develop a scope. They will quantify the number of hours uh, that they think a project will take. Mm -hmm. And as always, we come back to the board with that scope. And we ask for permission to expend X amount of dollars based on that contract we have. Awesome. I will second the uh, Mary Lou. Oh, it's already seconded, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. so Jim beat you to it. We can't see your hand. I didn't hear him, so. <laughs> That's all right. I would like to ask, uh, what about other areas besides Ashworth Avenue and... Um, the Green Gentian, Kings Highway. Yeah, so there are other areas. There certainly are, and that's where I was saying, you know, we have a few areas that we need to look at the culverts, and uh, some of those get into the wetland permits, and mm -hmm. some of the clearing. We need to be able to look at uh, hydro hydrological studies um, of watersheds, you know, what's yeah. going on. Um, the firms that we've selected here, I wouldn't hesitate to say that they're all qualified Good. to do that work. Mm -hmm. uh, but much like anything else, you never want to put all your eggs in one basket because yeah. if someone is diligently working here on this, so say Red Pierce is working on the wastewater yeah. treatment facilities yeah. upgrade and they're working on our downtown Lafayette, that uh, we have other engineers that are as responsible yeah. and, and professional to be able to look at maybe a different flooding problem or even help us develop that next Warren article yeah. or because that next Because there piece. are other areas that are flooding. I mean, you yeah. could go oh, yeah. uh, from Ashworth Avenue all the way to uh, Church Street and really all of the marsh areas that yep. are behind all the buildings on Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. So you've got that flexibility over five years, correct? Yes. Excellent. All right. C and D. Re C and D, so back to, back to refuse. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> as I said, the market is changing earlier um, always uh, have our ears out uh, trying to find other ways to uh, uh, skin the cat uh, don't do that I know <laughs> I shouldn't pick on the cats maybe we well, squirrels be maybe. nice squirrels <laughs> all right um, a couple months ago um, we were up for renewal with Triano uh, waste hauling services out of uh, South Portland, Maine. They've been handling our C and D waste. Uh, essentially, what uh, the fee bet a year ago was uh, $48 a ton and about $300 per haul. Uh, in, in June, they uh, proposed a cost increase. Um, I asked them to put it in writing. 
came back before the board and it basically went from 48 a ton to 85 a ton uh, and the transportation went from 300 to 450 dollars per load at that time i started reaching out to the eco mains of the world uh erco up the road on route 101 uh, places like that to see who uh, could had the capability to take our C&D waste and what the, what the cost would be. Uh, one of the uh, major hurdles is that the two trailers we put our C&D waste into do not belong to the town. They belong to Triano. So um, as part of this uh, discussion, I also had to reach out and find who actually even had trailers that they could uh, provide. Um, I did state back in, uh, let's see, email back from July and when we sat with the board that I would look and seek out other solutions and um, I found one. Um, the ERCO facility located up the road in Route 101 in Epping. Uh, they're willing to take our uh, C&D waste for $70 a ton so we'd save $15 a ton just on the uh, current rate. They'd also offer to haul each trailer at $320 per haul which is uh, $130 per, per haul over our current rate. Uh, I think last year we did, so the front page, about 74, yeah, 74 hauls last year. So it's a fairly significant amount of money. Um, in talking with them, what their, the contract would actually be with a subcorporation they have called ReEnergy uh, out of the same location, Epping. They're actually using the material uh, as fuel for a uh, refuse to energy uh, location, burn, um, and they can provide the trailers. And they've, uh, they've given us an insurance certificate, but uh, at, uh, at present, uh, we noted that the insurance certificate needs to be redone so it names the town. Uh, what I'd be asking is the, that you'd authorize the town manager to negotiate a three-year contract with ReEnergy of Epping for the disposal of our C&D waste based on the provided rates. With this authorization, the town would end our current contract with Triano Waste. Uh, my reason for this recommendation that the waste streams are in an extreme state of fluctuation, having some stability over C&D waste stream at this time would allow the department to focus back onto the recycling. So that's my... Yeah, I have a question. You're talking construction and demolition waste, right? Two by four. But whatever. But, but what I'm trying to figure out is where is, is this individuals in Hampton who are demolishing stuff who bring it to the uh, tree, uh, to the public works yard, or is this stuff that we are doing as a community if we're knocking something down? Because it's if you be, have private contractors, why can't we tell them? to take their demolition waste directly up to Epic or wherever they choose. Get that part off our backs if it's just... Well, for one, it's we do make, I won't say we make money, but we charge money. And I will go back and look at to see as part of, you know, this waste analysis what... Right. Um, I know two years ago we made $164,000 in just in, in waste tipping fees from uh, oh. Seven cents a ton for trash to uh, five and ten dollar chargers for microwaves and TVs, oh. okay. uh, refrigerators, and C and D waste. So we do we take in a good amount, but we don't take it in for free. We okay. um, if uh, contractors are working in town, we have them fill out what's known as a contractor form. Uh, they have to tell us which uh, okay. location they're working, and we charge for it. So no, this is not a free service that we're giving away. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. And what do we do with the, the sheetrock shingles and pressure treated wood? That is, an, we've already been diverting that for a number of months into the waste stream. Okay. Oh. The sheetrock. And again, I think that, again, that's just education for people. Right. I mean, well, we've been basically separated on the floor. <coughs> you know, as we see the loads as they come in. We've always got staff up there on the floor say, no, that piece that can go into the C&D, but all that needs to go into the, mm. so we've, we've been doing it for a number of months. I'll make a motion that we approve this with the uh, stipulation that you come in with the, with the upgrade update on the charges you do sure. and what, what it's costing and what, what we're making. So 
I'd I mean, like to have my comments though on this. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, because I read today the uh, person that lives next to me who might appear to be a uh, contractor, and I think he does have some kid working for him. Uh, they took down a shed that took at least three truckloads of things to the dump mm -hmm. uh, to the transfer station because um, I saw the trucks kept pulling out. So I think that th these, if we want to see people improve their properties, there's a lot of people that work as their own contractors. Mm -hmm. And they could appear to be contractors, but they're not. Mm -hmm. They put their own little gigs together and they do this work to improve their properties. And that's happening all over Hampton. I agree. But so, again, they can, they, can, they can take it to them, which is great, but they have to pay for it too. Right. So. Yeah, no, I have no problem with that, but that's what I'm saying. Why would good we want to wanna stop or make I, or hinder this? No. The, no. By okay. hindering this, we'll uh, make all of us be looking at a lot of things that need to go. Right. I'm seconding Jim's motion. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. All right. Oh, you got cracks in it. I trade your crack ceiling for mailbox. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so you, don't, you don't want mailbox. No. Um, we did put out the annual roadway pavement crack ceiling bid uh, as we do every year. Uh, this year, uh, we opened the bids on August 13th. There were two companies that came back. Uh, this year, we decided how much money we have to put towards it. Uh, we have in the upwards of 10,000 uh, some odd dollars to put towards the end of High Street and Winnicunit where we really want to work on some of the cracks down there until we can redo the roads. The two bids that came in uh, came in at uh, 39 cents per linear foot and six, oops, excuse me, that is 34 cents per linear foot on that cover sheet. It is 34 cents per linear foot from Seal Coating Inc. and the other bidder was 69 cents. Uh, wow. So we are asking the board um, approve Seal Coating Inc.'s bid at 34 cents per linear foot. Uh, Seal, Co Seal Coating Inc. has the qualifications, experience, and reputation to inform the services for the town of Hampton. Uh, and we recommend that a waiver also be granted, and this is strictly because we did send it out uh, to over seven uh, companies and it couldn't be 10 there weren't 10 that do that here in this uh, area we also posted it on the town's website and our own website but we do need the waiver so we I need a motion for a waiver I'll make that motion. for the I'll town second. purchasing policy yeah that does not comply with the town's person section 718-4 subsection b2 because it's fewer <laughs> than three qualified so I have a motion by yeah. Mary no, Louise. He's, uh, uh, Rick made the motion. Motion and I by seconded. Rick, seconded gotcha. by Mary Louise. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Unanimous. Chairman, may we so, skip G for the moment? Hold on. So let's make and sure. And just go to H. So we have the motion to, um, for the waiver. Now, do we need a motion oh, to accepted. allow them to go into contract with oh, okay. Seal Coating I'll Inc. Make that I'll second Rick. All right. Okay. Motion by Rick, seconded by Mary Louise. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, good. Thank you. Okay. So, we. What were you saying, Mary Louise? If we can skip G for the moment and just go to the mailbox replacement policy, because I've got some concerns on okay. that. Okay. Uh, a, a G that might take a little more time. Okay. And, and a nice memo. Thank you, because that clarifies a lot of the. Uh, you're going to give us a quick recap? Sure, I'll give you the, the, the nickel tour, as it were. <laughs> um, as many of you know, uh, Hampton does, uh, we, we try hard within Public Works to miss mailboxes. Mm -hmm. But I would say that um, somewhere between 20 and 30, depending on the severity of the winter, uh, get damaged. Uh, not all of them actually get struck. A number of them get pushed over when we're pushing back snowbanks. I know the winter of 14 and 15 when we had 120 inches of snow, there was a number of them um, that got damaged. Uh, one of them, one or two of them were the granite ones. Um, while they're a very strong material, they're also very brittle material. Yeah. Uh, I used to have 
two granite posts at the end of my driveway. I now have one due to a um, friend of the family taking out the other one. <laughs> so um, heavy enough, I elected never to, uh, to replace it. Um, I have given you back some information, you know, going back as far as 13, um, you know, what we've done with respect to the granite ones is uh, to actually drill a hole in the bottom and the center of the, the piece that broke off. We pin it, we pin it with epoxy, we set it back in place. Um, where, we in can. where we can. On some of those that has been acceptable, a number of them it has been acceptable, and uh, some of them recently uh, have not. My concern is, is this. Um, with some mailbox systems that I'm seeing, they're literally a work of art. Oh, yeah. My concern is the day that, you know, and, and I said this to one of the owners here recently, if you had the bronze maiden of the mist and she was holding out the, the mailbox and I came along and snapped the arms off and it cost you 30000 do you think that the town should be obligated to replace your work of art that is within the town's right away? And surprised me, but the resident said yes. <laughs> he thinks we should. Um, uh, it would be a deal breaker for my budget. Yeah. But I but I work within the policies of that you as the board grant me. So um, my preference is that um, we stick with the thirty-five dollars per mailbox and anything above that. Um, the people are on their own. Do you want it? Yeah. Oh, my nice little recommend. Yeah. Um, There's two different ways. I mean, right. the, the whole reason we're bringing this to your attention is that there needs to be more defined clarity uh, clarity in the policy. Right. Either it's a straight out policy, uh, policy, not mm -hmm. an apology, a straight out policy <coughs> of what we will provide regardless of what you have there. Or as I attached um, to Chris's memo, uh, I did some research on my own of, of what other towns are doing around us. Mm -hmm. And there are policies out there that say clearly that mailboxes, light poles, fences, and other structures placed within eight feet of the edge of pavement. So if it's our right of way, right. that just because of our operations, um, they're there at the owner's risk and that the town will not be responsible for replacement if they are damaged during snow or emergency operations. And the point of that comes along, you know, everything else placed in a town right away is put there with approval of the board. So when we start getting fences that may have crossed over a property line or a mailbox or things like that, mm -hmm. other towns have taken the position that no, if it's that close to our roadway, you can't expect us to be held responsible. We live in New England, right. sometimes we can't see. But we also have worked with another policy, which is, you know what, we will certainly send our crew out, try to help you repair it up to $35 and that's what you get. What um, happens if it's on their own property though? They can't. Still the same thing? Mail. Most of them are not well, necessarily. Well no, mine's on my own property. Is it on your own? Granite. Yes. Oh. And it's on anyone on Ocean Boulevard because the sidewalk is the end of the right of way. Well, right, that lovely situation thankfully is handled by the state. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. and I, I agree. I stand blessed on that one. Uh, and I'm sure they do nothing. We tend to not have a lot. I mean, I honestly am trying to think of an area where a mailbox, meaning a mailman driving handout, mm -hmm. you know, into the street type of box, ones that would be susceptible to a type of snow emergency. I mean, mine's attached to my house. Mm -hmm. If we hit that one, we have bigger problems. <laughs> so I don't think that that's what we're, yeah. you know, does talking the, about this, here. Does the post office pick it up if it is attached to your house? Do they deliver your mail? They do. How far off do they have to get out of their truck to do that? I have a walking mailman. I mean, this, oh. So this has been established through the postmaster right. for many years. But what we're specifically talking about are when you're driving down the edge of road, I mean, you can think of Brown Ave. You can think of, yeah. Toll Farm you know, which one? Toll, Toll Farm, Farm Road. Is a, you know, yeah. other ones that have the mailboxes, sometimes they do get hit. Um, but they are in the right of way. What about if it's on Little River Road uh, and they, uh, the people could put their boxes on their own property, would the mail post office still pick them up? Do you know the answer to that? You know, I, I mean, it would be they could drive the truck right in, in between yeah, the it, light poles. I, we, I know with the postal services decided on a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, I wouldn't even object to, like when they pave a driveway, if they want to pave an apron so that 
you know, they have something dry to stand on when, and keep the mailbox further off, that would be satisfactory mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. It's, uh, but yeah, on a case by case basis. The ones that are right on the road are a problem. Right. Yeah. Most of the damage is done by the snow plows. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it is. Late, like we had one way out on uh, Exeter Road um, just before Old Post Road. Uh, the driver's been doing the same route for 30 some odd years. And he even admitted, Chris, I don't know why I hit it, but, and he did it twice, by the way, he's good. Um, two consecutive storms, he hit the thing twice. In the previous 30 years, he never hit the thing. Mm -hmm. So those kind of accidents do happen. I mean, we went yeah. out there and fully replaced the whole mailbox. Yeah. Post up. But it was a mailbox within this $35 and it, it, range and it was fixable. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's literally yeah. right on the edge of it. So, um, yeah, some streets we have we get no calls from, and other streets we inevitably break one or two. So what's our policy now? Still thirty-five dollars. I'll make a dollars. motion to keep it that way. I'll second it. <clears throat> okay. Is there anything else that you want in the policy? That that's yeah. it. I mean, I, I think, think it's regardless a good idea. of the she, material yeah. it, that is damaged, it's yeah, thirty. Yeah, you mentioned that if you could help them, you would help them. Yes. Yeah, forget about the pinning of the granite or whatever. Is that a big deal? But no more than exceeding it's the not thirty-five dollars. But it's not okay. expensive. Yeah. yeah. So we have a motion and a second. No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Unanimous. I'd, I'd like to say that some of these people that have boulders in the right of way, why don't you just plow them out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> the two of them that I have in mind have already received letters identifying that they're in the way. I get a lot of complaints from people that, I can't, that almost get hit by cars that would like to be walking in the right of way, mm -hmm. but they can't because yeah. they're obstructed. Oh. Yeah. If you come Especially across on North Shore Road. Oh, yeah. Amazing. That's the same neighborhood I. <laughs> yeah, that's a big, busy yeah. road that's being abused like okay. crazy. So the next thing we have is finest kind of brewing industrial discharge request. Ah, uh, yes. And I'd like to point out, uh, Attorney Lynn Preston is in the room uh, behind me um, to answer any questions that you may have with respect to, to this, their specific request. Um, having said that, the, w the process is this, um, Finest Kind Brewing LLC are the new owners and operators of the Smutty Nose facility. Uh, pursuant to the sewer ordinance rules that we have within 30 days of the transfer, they sent us a letter and that initiated, if you will, a new uh, permit being drawn up or written or negotiated. Uh, we have gone back and forth. Um, this is a copy of the permit. Uh, Attorney Preston, we've met on it twice. Attorney Preston's uh, given us some comments back. Uh, they were very favorable comments. We incorporated it into the request. And at this time, the uh, item or the issue on the table is uh, to possibly, their request is to waive the sewer access fee account. Give you some not background on that. Um, you were all, uh, May 12th, uh, way back in uh, 2015, the board approved a $5.32 per cent one-time fee charge per gallon of any additional uh, wastewater that someone would want to send to the um, facility. Um, it's been in effect since then. I have been charging it. It's raised several hundred thousand dollars. Their, their request is based upon the um, opinion that uh, the new wastewater facility or upgrades that they're going to be putting in are cost somewhere between one and a quarter to one and a half million dollars. They feel that, I believe, in, if I speak incorrectly, sure, sure, chime in, um, that that adequately covers uh, or, or is a substantial enough contribution that, that why should they have to also pay this uh, particular fee. Um, as I explained to them, I don't, uh, it's not my fee, um, <laughs> it's to, to, uh, to waive. Um, it is not, uh, it's like a, you know, Kevin gets the set building permit fees, but I'm sure he has a rate schedule, but um, if outright granting a zero cost, he would have to ask either the manager and or in this case, I ask you the board because uh, you are the sewer superintendents. So um, that's the basis of the request. 
I'd like to hear from Fred on this. Okay. My clear understanding of what happened when we had agreed to provide municipal sewer service to Smoney Nose when it was originally built was that that was contingent upon them building a wastewater pretreatment system, mm -hmm. which was never done. Right. <clears throat> I don't think the fee should be waived, but I will go this far, that if the system is built, I think it should end. It sh should, uh, you know, perhaps be refunded or adjusted. Um, we have to treat this waste, and we've had difficulty doing it, and we've had difficulty with the state because we're doing it. Um, I, if you're going to make an exception for this one, you're going to need to make an exception for the next brewery, which is already being built in town. Ugh, yeah. And and you're going to have to make an exception for the one after that and whatever comes after that as well. So there is a condition here uh, that they need to have a pretreatment system installed and working that has never been consummated. Yeah, and it's been the subject of hours and hours of uh, talk here at this table. It's, it's, it's been a, a, a very sad commentary, and these, these folks aren't involved in that. I mean, mm -hmm. they're new. Uh, but it's been a very sad commentary dealing with the state for something that Smutty Nose did not do, the predecessors did mm -hmm. not do, and were required to do. Uh, it's been difficult for us, it's been difficult for them, uh, and they, they went out of business because of it. Quite frankly, they overextended themselves. Uh, but that doesn't mean the town has to take on the gaff for all of this. So yeah. your recommendation is to not do this? I don't think this is appropriate at this time. It may be appropriate sometime in the future, but I don't believe it's appropriate at this time. I'll make a motion that we or deny this could, and okay. possibly... I'll, I'll second it to open up for discussion. Yeah. Let's have the discussion. You need to discuss on the table. Yes. I have a question, too. Okay, so, uh, Jim. Yeah, my, my only feeling in this is, is this is something we've had a problem with all along. When we first started talking about the increased DOB, one of the reasons was we felt was because of the brewery, right? Well, two things. Back when we contemplated this in the original uh, presentation back to the board, and, um, it ended up being uh, you, in fact, got authority under the 2014 warrant to put in a sewer system development charge or SDC for short, uh, you hadn't set the rate. It wasn't until that following May that we actually set the rate based upon numbers that I gave you. But at the time, the major, I think the major issue was not so much BOD, but that uh, with the amount of development going on town-wide, the plant's capacity, we were approaching that 80% and beyond limit. Mm. And that Fortunately. a number of the taxpayers through the tax rate for years had, um, if you will, funded that development, if you will, those improvements still do through the tax rate. And that if others, the hotels, the larger subdivisions, really all the, all the development, if they were going to use up what others had paid for, well, then they had to they had to pay right. part for that. Capacity. I agree, and I and I and as Fred said, on the original plan, when Smarty Notes went in, it was that they would have a pre-treatment plant put in, which never was put in. And I I empathize with the new owners, except these are things that all should have been brought up before mm -hmm. they entered yes. into it. I believe because yep. now to come to the town and say, can you give us a break on something that should have been done mm -hmm. prior to this? Right something that taxpayers have already been paying for, something that taxpayers continue to pay for, I just don't, I just think it all should have been dealt with prior to the closing and everything. And, and so, you know, it's like so many times we have somebody come to us after they've started the development mm -hmm. or after they've bought a piece of property yeah. and say, oh, wow, there's an easement on it. Or, wow, there's a restriction we can't build a hotel on it. Or, wow, the sewer's not working yeah. properly. What can, what's, will the town do for us now? And I don't think it's the town's responsibility to do that. I right. think it's the responsibility of, of the buyer when buying the property to know exactly what they're going into and have a business plan in effect yes. that they can handle the increased, you know, I think, I think they're doing a great job out there right now, mm -hmm. tremendous job. But yeah. I don't think the town should accept any responsibility for them increasing their production. Mm -hmm. I was on the planning board when this whole thing was planned as a selectman's rep. This has always already been discussed over and over again that they were supposed to do this. They haven't done it. 
I think after uh, these new people that are there, uh, if they once they put what in what needs to be put in, if they want to come back and see if we want to reconsider it, I think that that's you know a possibility. But uh, I think that we need to see the proof of what's supposed to be there. The town already went and signed agreements for them to get federal funding for that project, uh, Mr. Welch, that was $750,000. Right. The town's already bent over backwards, mm -hmm. and the time has stopped for that. Now we can see what, um, you know, that how much money the town's investing on uh, fixing our uh, wastewater treatment plant, mm -hmm. and it does appear that some of the problems at the wastewater tr treatment plant have been, um, they're put a part of them are put on that brewery, and that was never supposed to be the way it was discussed during all the meetings at the planning board. And I'm not saying that that's your fault, and I, I think that if we, um, you know, want to reconsider this after it's done. But this is something that needs to be done, and I think it should be done, and I don't think that we should change anything until after it is done, and then if we want to reconsider, we can reconsider at that time. Regina? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to have to agree with what Rick just said, but I also want to highlight something on this. This is a temporary industrial discharge permit anyway, which it states that it's going to go approximately from 18 months from when it's signed. I'm assuming that's when the wastewater treatment plan would be complete. Will the treatment facility complete? Yes. The, would be uh, the end of this agreement. And then it, at the which time the town and Smutty Nose could reassess. We, I mean, who knows what it's going to be like in 18 months. We could have completely different type of technology. So we could reassess the situation and then at that time, maybe before we go into a more permanent agreement, set something up with money notes. Is that what the town manager is saying? I just want to make sure. No. This is, this is a very considerable expense for these folks at this time. And I don't right. think they should be required to pay it all up front. I think they can do that over an 18 month period or whatever we can arrange. Uh, so okay. that they can, in fact, afford to uh, uh, put this facility that they wish to build so they can increase their own production while not increasing our problems. Uh, once that's done, our problems are, you know, basically going to be pretty well solved with them. But, and I don't think they should be required to pay it all up front. I think this is something agree, that can yeah. be paid over a period of time by some agreement. And maybe it's only 50% of it that's paid over a period of time. Yet if the system doesn't go into effect in the 18 months that they're planning it, they have to pay the balance. I mean, there's, we are going to have to stay in the gap of this uh, without even having a new wastewater treatment plant put in effect. Mm -hmm. It's going to take us two years to get this plant built. It's not a simple matter. And we're going right. to have to be treating this additional material during that two-year period. So I think we can work with them. I think this can work out. I don't think I, would, I don't want to try to put them out of business. That's not the objective. But I also want to be paid or have the taxpayers paid for the benefit that's given out. I'd have to agree. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the original owners of Smutty Nose set that in operation in my prior term here. And it was my understanding that in addition to the grant they got to connect the sewer up to um, high, well, what, Exeter Road, uh, that, that went in nice, nicely. But I was uh, going along happily thinking that the pretreatment system had been constructed and I was very upset when I found out that that was not the case. Now that there are new owners, uh, I'm not going to be sitting here for the next three or four years waiting for the pretreatment stuff to go in. It's their responsibility to do that. This is a big drain and a big problem on our um, waste system and I'm not very uh, happy about uh, people stalling and stalling on what they were supposed to be put in to begin with. The next thing it says, at this time I would like, uh, on the memo, 
I would like to bring you all up to speed with the status of our ongoing efforts to issue Finest Kind Brewing, LLC, an industrial discharge permit. Now, in our report from Wright Pierce last year, page 2-11, <coughs> it says, industrial permitting recommendations, the impact of increased industrial pollutant loading plays a significant role in the remaining capacity of the treatment plant, both for current and projected wastewater conditions. Based on the exi existing design capacity, the brewery may be contributing anywhere from 10 to 40 percent of the wastewater treatment plant's overall pollutant total capacity. This is the treatment plant that we're going to be investing $41 million in the next few years to get that plant upgraded. It also says we should apply an industrial surcharge fee for permitted industrial users to account for the cost of treating higher concentration wastewater stream. I have asked with no result, but I hope for one now. I would like Wright Pierce to provide this board with specifics on the industrial surcharge fee. Right here now you're talking about an industrial discharge permit, but I am looking overall as a future um, hope of mine that this brewery will be um, surcharged, would have an industrial surcharge fee applied as they do in other communities, Exeter and Portsmouth and so forth. But there are not enough specifics in this report. I have asked and not received the information, but I am now asking very firmly. I want our engineers to tell us exactly what is the industrial surcharge fee, exactly how the fees are scaled, and I think that's something we need to know. If we, if we follow Fred's recommendation and give a little leeway here, I don't want to go for the next two and a half years assuming that the pretreatment system has been put in to this brewery, uh, and it better not, it better not take all that time, otherwise they don't deserve to be in business. So, Yeah, I, I just strongly agree that, that Rick said the planning board said this way back, that it was a, a, a part mm -hmm. of the agreement. The other thing is that if somebody's going into business and buying a business, you better have a business plan that you can handle the money t to do what you need to do. Right. And this was well known at the time yep. that they bought the business that it needed a treatment plan. Yep. So if somebody says we don't have the money to carry yeah. through on a business plan, Tough. then I don't see why the town should be, should be giving into it. I, I just you don't are. at all. And I, I think it would be a slap in the face to the planning board who put these conditions on this way back. Mm -hmm. I think also I have to agree with Mary Louise that, you know, is this going to go on again? And we're going to be back here in three years and somebody's saying, well, we tried to get the treatment plan in, but we couldn't get it in. So can we have another? Somebody's got to, it's been too long. And there's been too many taxpayers who have come in here and said to us, I'm sick of paying taxes for the sewer treatment and not getting, you know, and, and having the industrial plants not pick up what they should be picking up. Right. And I hate to say it, I've been in business for 44 years. No one's ever helped me as many times as I want people to help me. Uh, I always end up doing it myself because that's part of my business plan. We can I, do a I word will, article for you, Rick. <clears throat> I, I will tell you that I sat through all the meetings, almost all the meetings, I think I missed one, at the change of ownership of this facility. Yeah. Okay. And what I got out of that those meetings was that these folks weren't given all the truth to begin with. And that really hurt them badly because what you know, what they were told and what everyone else else on the other side that was trying to sell this business told them yeah. that everything was running yeah. along just hunky dory and in fact yeah. that's not the case. They that's know they need a pre treat pre treatment plant in there because it wasn't there. Right. But they had no idea of the scale of the problem they were entering. I think remember that they those, should go to the state remember, to get some... Remember uh, also that we had another group come in and say, oh, we didn't know there was a conservation easement. Yeah. Another yeah. group come in and say, oh, we didn't know there was a... 
I mean, I think it's, it's somebody's well, I'm saying, don't excuse it. I'm not excusing it. I think it's need, their responsibility. We need to work with them because they employ a lot of people in this town. Well, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. And that's why the SBA or somebody like that should be helping them, or the state, yeah. not the taxpayers of Hampton. Yeah. Ignorance isn't necessarily bliss. Never has been. So where do you want to go? We got a motion. And your um, motion is to? That, to deny, uh, you know, do we want them speak? Do we? We can. Sure. Yep. So, Why not? go ahead. Thank you. I'm Lynn Preston with She and Finney, as Chris had mentioned. I also have. You want to do the microphone? Sure. We really want the public to be sure. able to hear you. You might have to lift that up a little bit. My name is Lynn Preston. I'm an attorney with She and Finney Bass and Green. I'm an environmental attorney, and I represent Finest Kind. I also have with me Doug McNair, who is the chief operations officer for the facility. Um, I'm going to let Doug speak on a lot of the particulars that we talked about because we do have a plan. We do indeed have a plan, and the plan is part of the draft permit that you'll take a look at here. There is absolutely a, a, a plan in there, and it's a plan per the contract of the wastewater treatment permit. So we have a plan to put a pretreatment permit in place. Let me start off by saying, I understand there's a lot of frustration with what happened before. I can see it. It's very clear. But from all due respect, we're a new company. We cannot go back to what happened to you guys in the past. I apologize. We're a new company that has a forward-looking focus. And the forward-looking focus is to bring that brewery back up to speed, to where it should be and where it can be for the town, for the state, and for you know, the communities. If you take a look at the draft permit, there is a, I, I don't want to call it a consent, um, Chris, what do we call it? It's a, uh, it's really, it's the steps that are, that are required of us to take to install that pretreatment program. The facility's committed to it, we've committed to it, everybody's committed to it, the town, and I will, I will give Chris credit here, Chris and Jen credit, because in our first couple meetings, as Fred saw, there was a lot of tension in the room. It was very tense because of all yeah. the historical stuff. But I gotta keep reiterating, this is a new company and it's you know, yeah. it's very, very difficult to hold a new company responsible for the acts of its prior when it's a whole new ownership, whole new operator. So please try and take us at, you know, at what we're committing to here going forward. I understand the past yeah. is the past, but you've gotta look at us as a new company. I'm gonna let Doug talk now about what the plans are for the pretreatment system and going forward so you can get a good mm -hmm. sense of what we're committed to. You good with that? Sure. Okay, come on up. Remember, once burned, twice shy. I, I understand. Good. I understand. So, good evening. Um, I'm appreciative of having a chance to be able to talk to you tonight. Um, and as Lynn's pointed out, I also understand. And every time I have a meeting with everybody in this room or anybody associated with this, yeah. sort of that back history. But I'm here tonight to hopefully try and explain, because I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding of what we're even asking for here. Um, we're not asking for lenience on putting in the pretreatment plan, actually quite the opposite. We're very aggressively looking to move forward with this based on the outcome of what the decisions that are made in this process, we're ready to go into action immediately. I want to be putting I've already done all the reviews of companies to design facilities for us. Mm -hmm. We're ready to move forward once we have a clear path forward that we know that we're in lockstep with the city of what needs to be done here. What we're asking for is in doing this process, <clears throat> excuse me, we know that this is going to take us some time to build this thing. I'm looking to build this thing not in two years. I'm looking to try and have this done in the middle of next year. I'm being very honest with you that we are going to push this thing forward as fast as we can. We want to get this completed. It's in our business best interest, and it's in our best interest to start building a relationship with the city that we all want. Okay? okay? I, I can't say that strongly enough. Um, I understand that you don't have the record with us. You know, I'm a new face to you guys. You've never met me before. I understand yeah. that. Um, but I'm here to say that that is the commitment the company is trying to put forward here. Um, <clears throat> what we're asking or what we were suggesting is in the process of working through this with Chris, that as we put this short-term permit, which is really just for the next 18 months, whenever we can get the facility 
the pretreatment plant online, whatever period that takes us to accomplish, weather permitting and all that kind of thing, is in this permit, we said, look, in good faith, we want to give the city because we don't have it online yet, right? We are going to be putting a burden on the system. And we say, in true fairness, we should pay because we're going to be putting a burden on the system for that. Yeah. Once we've got the pretreatment plant in, we are going to have dramatically brought the load down. We're making this investment in this system of it maybe closer to two million by the time we're done with this. Yeah. But in doing that, we are going to have brought the load down so much that one of the things that we will need for the growth of our company and as an SIU, as an industrial user, you typically are getting you know, 20, 25,000 gallons of flow. Not looking at the load, but just how much flow you're going to use in the system. And as we grow our company over the next five years, we're going to probably need that volume. And we felt that in fairness, right now, without the pretreatment, we absolutely agree that we should be helping support the city in funding the work that needs to be done. But when we make this investment in the pretreatment plant and bring that burden back off of the municipal system, we're hoping the city will partner with us and say, okay, you know what? You guys have done a great job with that. We're going to give you the ability to have that volume to grow on. That's all we were asking for. It's not not putting in the system or anything. And it was trying to work closely with you guys right now to try and help mitigate it. Tom. Jim, I, 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 two yeah. things. Sorry. Number one, not dealing with the past history. Mm -hmm. But you should have done your homework before we're dealing with the new history. So you should yeah. have known it. You should have, as a, as a viable business, you should mm -hmm. have known that. So we're dealing with that aspect of it. The other thing I want to just say is I was going along reading this saying, oh, this is pretty good and everything until I got to the back page, your letter attorney, to the town saying that uh, we look forward to receiving the updated version of the IDP shortly. Also in the mail, the town of Hampton asked to find us present what it can manage with regard to the payment of the town's wastewater development charge listed in the town of Hampton sewer ordinance. Although first kind does not agree that as an industrial user, it's subject to the town's, you know, so right away you're telling us you don't agree to pay him some of the money. What I'm not acquiescing into this letter is that we feel that that charge applies to us going forward as an industrial user. And Jen and I have had this conversation. We, there are some, the language in the ordinance does not clearly specify whether this applies to an industrial discharge or going forward. That's all I was saying there. I can't acquiesce that. I cannot give that up in my, in the instance that at some, some time, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we're putting $1.52 million into a pretreatment system and you guys aren't going to work with us a little bit here to just assuage the fees a little bit. I have no way saying that we're not going to help. That's why there's a, there's a well, cost, kinda, there's a payment just threw a negative issue. thing to me, so you're coming in asking for help and all of a sudden there's preserving a preserving finest kind's rights. That's all and it's aren't doing Aren't you going to own rights. this pretreatment yeah. center uh, treatment plant? It's going to be owned by your company, Correct. right? Yeah. Correct. That's why I'm against it. I mean, you own it. When you decide to sell your business, you're going to get it back. We, the town of Hampton, the taxpayers are tired of um, being responsible. You know, they want people to pay like they pay. And I, I don't see this to be something that uh, is fair to the taxpayers of the town of Hampton. Well, the, f the federal pretreatment requirements require that if we're going to put in pretreatment, we have to run it, we have to own it, we have to. Chris, Chris is at the other end. Chris and Jen are at the other end. But as, a, as an industrial discharger, the federal requirements and, and the requirements the state has and Chris takes on require that we run and own and operate the pretreatment facility. The state can't have any, any obligation to it. They just, they're, they're the ones who are enforcing stuff against us. So it, it really is our, our system. I know, but why should the people of Hampton pay to subsidize it? I'm not it? sure why the people of Hampton are paying to subsidize it. Well, by waiving the fee. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I have a question. Hold on. Finish your. You know, I, I, from what I'm hearing, that you're looking to have the fee waived. I, I think that might have been a little. Yeah, bit the, the wording maybe Chris. isn't the right. <laughs> what we're what we're trying to say is when we put the system in. Right now, we have a 15,000 gallon permit in place. I was saying, okay, we're very close to that volume as it is right now. So I said. Right. Let us take that up to 18,000. We will uh, pay the fee to, this, to bring that volume up to that point. In a non-pretreatment, just like every other business in the community that's just putting it down the drain, 
right? We're not preaching, sure, we're doing a little pH adjustment, we're not really treating, right? But when we invest the money in putting in the pretreatment plant, which is going to be processing our effluent and bringing that down, taking that load off of the, the, the municipal system, <clears throat> excuse me, we're asking that, in fairness, doesn't that make sense that we're making that investment into the community and into the supporting of that wastewater mm -hmm. system that, that we be allowed to have the extra uh, 7,000 uh, GPD a day, take it up to the 25,000. That's where I have the problem. I mean, you agreed to this. I mean, the original people mm -hmm. agreed to it. It's yeah. the way that it is. It's the way that the town, has, you know, how we think about it. Uh, you know, if it's, you know, do we know when it all goes over fifteen thousand, Mr. Welch? Yes. 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 So okay. I don't see why, you know, if we continue with the original fifteen thousand till you get it finished, I'm I'm fine with that. But over fifteen thousand, in in my opinion, it should be paid for. No, we're already agreeing. We're, that's what our letter actually so is saying. So I just wanted to ask a clarifying question, if that's okay. And I'm asking it myself because I feel like. We may be talking a few different things, but all very important things that need to come out on the table in this discussion. Yeah. That letter on the back is asking for 18,000 gallons, which is 3,000 gallons over the 15 that they right. have. Mm -hmm. And they're saying they would pay the $5.32 mm -hmm. wastewater development charge for that 3,000 over, which equals $16,000, but they were asking to pay it over nine months while they have that increase of that 3,000 is when they're putting in this pre-treatment system. At least that's my question. Yes. That's, it's, exactly. that's, that's correct. correct. And, and it, I didn't know if everybody... And would, not asking for any refund after you get your treatment. No, 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 no. no. no, no, no. And then what happens when the treatment plant is in, in place? Once, I'm, I'm telling you what I'm understanding, no, and no, this is why I think it's important that we're all on the same page. Yeah. My understanding of that is that, so the treatment's in place, the BOD loading and everything comes back down. We have everything that the planning board was promised, this board was promised, we were promised. <laughs> and with that, because they're BOD loading, the problems that are the issues are not as strong, they may come back and say, we want, can we have more volume? And we'll show you that we still won't increase it because our pretreatment does this, our pH does this. And this is where I would say, well, if they're increasing again, for our wastewater development charge, at least the way we're seeing it, is that you would pay for each increase that you're asking for. Whether that's what they agree to or not, that was sort of how I was seeing this. But this letter originally I was seeing as a 3,000 gallons increase paid at, but asking this board to say, you know, how if we do it with like someone else, we say a building permit. Well, they have a building permit. They're just trying to put in their pretreatment. They're asking to pay for that 16 over nine months. Mm -hmm. But that was the only part I wanted to interject. I just okay, didn't know if we were all on about the nine same months. page. What, so what, what, why is it only nine months? months? Yeah, hold on. Oh, yes. Regina wants something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have Go ahead, question. Regina. Okay. So are we waiving anything? Are we waiving anything with this? No. You mean like the requirement for, for the... For this permit, we're not asking you for... No, you're not doing anything. They're not trying to offer you sixteen thousand dollars to just raise the discharge by three thousand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which so raising said. it to the eighteen thousand. What you say? What, what was that, Regina? So right now the maximum is fifteen thousand, fifteen million gallons a day. Fifteen thousand. Like oh. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. <laughs> That's a lot. You would like it. You would like it to be eighteen thousand, and you were going to pay for the differential of the three thousand, but you'd like to do it in payments. That's correct. And then at the end of the time, after you go through and you have your waste, your treatment plant going, and you we do this all again, and we sit down, and then we'll figure out what the indefinite agreement will be based on what has been done at the at the money nose. And the ask on that piece is that once that pretreatment plan is in place, what we we're asking for was just whether the city would be good with allowing us to do that without the fee because we put this whole system in and brought the numbers down and we're looking to put the numbers in at lower than actually what the original company had said okay, that they were going to do. Repeat that again because I don't understand. Yeah. What do you mean without Explain the fee? The difference between the flow and the concentration right. Well, I think, yeah. 
yeah, through yeah. that. Yeah, um, well, I don't see how we can make that decision right now when, I mean, I know there's through no fault of your own, there is a path with that, and I think that's always going to be an issue, unfortunately, but what the entire board also needs to realize is that you guys are brand new. You're in here, you're trying to build a company. Like Fred says, you're going to make jobs. You're going to make another thing for Hampton to come to, so. Now, there's a difference between volume and BOD. I think people are getting confused yes. so with that. So that's, as Chris and I are having our own sidebars over here, I apologize for that. Um, what it's important to remember, and I am talking in the simplest terms. Microphone, Jeff. Yeah. I am talking in the simplest terms. Uh, wastewater concentrations, dilution formulas, and everything else you want to talk about, those are not my specialty. But what I do understand is that in this temporary permit, it was currently written as 15,000 gallons. Uh, per day and they have a max BOD concentration meaning when the BOD is tested it can be this max and that's what we're doing as the temp permit yeah. until the pre-treatment is placed you don't get any more of that you don't get any more BOD you do not get any more BOD so they may yeah. increase the flow but that doesn't automatically go the flow equals more BOD we're holding firm to what the permit says for the BOD level. That is our okay. plant's constraint. It's almost counterintuitive, right? It, it, it does, and it does not make, but there, it, there's reasons for that. It's how they process, it's how they waste, it's right. how they, they do their process internally, just like what we've been doing since <coughs> they've come on board and before they've come on board, is that we watch the BOD load, and if it is not where it needs to be, they, are responsible for figuring that out and that has caused tanks to be put on site that's caused extra wasting of materials loss of yeast lo I mean it's, it's a process that I know nothing about I'm regurgitating what I've heard from all different sources Jim yeah um, Rusty. I've listened to the town manager I've listened to you guys I'm basically really against this I'm willing to go with it I'm willing to go with it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not willing to make any decision now on what will happen after the big treatment plant's put in. Mm -hmm. And I want some kind of guarantee that the treatment plant's going to be put in. I yeah. want something, well, I want something guaranteed, and not just, mm -hmm. you can be the nicest people in the world, the, the other people were the nicest people in the yeah. world, but just saying we're going to do it. Sure. That doesn't do and anything for me. That. I'm happy to guarantee. We, we'll share copies of the. Well, uh, uh, let me explain. Let orders. me explain the permit as well. The per per permit actually has required. Once we sign that permit, that's a pretty much a contract that we're implementing this as we say we are in the permit. Otherwise, we don't have a permit anymore. Chris will pull that permit from us if we don't follow the steps we're required to do to install that pre-treatment. So it's it's right in that basic wastewater treatment. We can't run. We can't operate without a permit. So I asked first. Can I just have a follow up no. on my question? Yes. All right. So, you don't follow up on your permit. You go out of business? We don't follow the, you mean, if we don't follow the steps in the permit, you know, if we, without, so, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking. What I'm, what I'm asking for is I said a guarantee that it's gonna happen, and you said that if you sign that permit, that's a guarantee. It's a guarantee that Chris can pull the permit if we don't install it. Which and means we a, shut the discharge off. Which means they go out of business. Right. right. Essentially, yes. yeah. And we had that ability before and didn't do I'm, it. I'm still trying here. I, yeah, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Mary Louise. Okay. First of all, we've got to make you into a country person. This is a town, <laughs> not a city. <laughs> a town. I'm not sure where you came from, but it's a town, not a city. Um, hmm. Our wastewater treatment plant is an old plant. We have been struggling to keep up with it, and we have, starting this past March, I guess, we passed the first of what are going to be three bonds to update that plant. We can't really run this town efficiently without that treatment plant. There's going to be a total of $41 million over the, on the taxpayers' backs in these three incremental money articles that we're going to have to pass. And there are quite a number of individuals in Hampton, long time residents in Hampton, 
who do not yet have access to sewer. You can see, perhaps, that this is a, a bit of a problem if we're going to have uh, John Doe and his wife on a street without sewer and we're saying, oh, okay, this is great, this business is here and we're going to be nice to them with uh, the flow that can come in and all that. It, this is a problem. This is a problem for us as selectmen mm -hmm. in the town. So <laughs> we're really juggling this and it left a very bad taste with me to not see the prior owners do what they were supposed to do and they had before or whatever years to do it and they did not keep faith with this town. So I think most of us are gun shy. I certainly am. And I can understand that. I can completely understand that. That's why when Finest Kind came on, they knew right away they had to install a pretreatment or, or they weren't going to be able to operate. So that's why we're here today because and we're installing that pretreatment. And so. over and above, I intend still to push for what our engineers told us. Rusty, I want to ask some questions the about tonight. About the industrial surcharge fee, which may be coming in the future. So, go ahead. Okay, are there other uh, businesses in town that have flows that are comparable to this? In terms of BOD, yes. In terms of overall volume, no. So this, this. I think the Bronx is, has 20,000, doesn't it? Brazonics does. Yeah. It, okay. We have there. Brazonics is probably close in. Brazonics is probably close in flow. I don't have right. their permit with us. And I know that Foss is close in BOD because we've actually given. We're in the permit renewal process with Foss. We've given them the same BOD loading. Which is fifteen thousand. No, no, it's it's theirs is no more than I think it's five hundred pounds per day. Uh, again, the BOD loading and the flow are two different numbers. So, like in this permit, it's the 15,000 gallons, um, and then the BOD is uh, uh, so many pounds. Well, how per many day. pounds? Uh, we're putting in a daily max loading of, uh, if I'm reading this right, Dur BOD. During the summer, it's down to weekly average of 450 and a monthly average of 350 or sorry 450 450 pounds so, yeah 450 so pounds. it's similar to so it's very similar yeah. to fox and what happens in the future uh if we make any new regulations because there have been talks about regulations about you know uh sewer charges uh anything the town puts on uh and cha any ordinance that the town changes immediately, well, would mm -hmm. nullify these agreements. It, they add on, they tack on yes. to so any agreements that are already made. Right. Okay, that was my so, question. I got, I got one question, if you don't mind. Sure. <laughs> BOD, right now, you're going to be limited at 450. When you put your treatment plant in, what will that BOD be? Done? It's a good question. It's one of the things we've got to figure out for the design of the system. One of the things that I'm starting the work with Chris and his team on is also is developing what the long-term permit needs to look like. And right. it's one of the things that actually in the next month or so, we've got a little bit of time. I can get the process started in the pretreatment, but in very short order, we need to really nail those down. You know, is that going to be you know, 350 or just what, what's that number need to be? Because mm -hmm. that obviously will impact the system. Um, it, has a, it has a very direct, impact on it. We're assuming that it's going to be you know, similar. We'll probably be able to bring it down some. You can't, I mean, you can't get it down to you know, 50. Right. It's, it, that would be, you know, it'd be this ginormous system. Right. Um, but, but yeah, that's the intent. And we're actually, we've started that process. The last time we got together, we started having uh, some of those conversations about developing that. And the BOD is ultimately what we really want to right. decrease, correct? Because, yes. yes, in the short term, it's that's the one thing that would uh, it's not the allow the state to step in. It would also force the, us to have to put in the additional aeration lagoons. Right. It's not so. It's not the volume of water. It is actually the I BOD get, that goes into. Actually, that. if you look at and the Wright Pierce report, the Wright Pierce have, report actually specifies that they have plenty of capacity for increased flow. It's right. the BOD. Correct. Right. Yeah. Correct. And that's where this original request was 
from our viewpoint of looking at that, that's what we're looking at. I think well, if we get bring confused. that down, yeah, is it okay if we have a little bit more volume out of it? And I think um, people get confused over that right. the BOD and the volume oh, of water, right. thinking that it is one of the same. Jim? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the town manager has said that he's for this, and I guess you guys. It wasn't a f I really want to make it clear. It. I just wanted to make sure we were all talking okay. yeah, the same you thing. You know, I'm very reluctantly would go along with it. I would go along with it just because they're business, they employ people. I just really think the homework should have been done before they bought it, but that's history. I mean, I will reluctantly go along with it for those reasons. Um, I have one more question. Go ahead. Um, now, you said that you plan to have this done by next year. Yeah, we're, we're looking, we want to start construction hopefully this fall. I mean, we, arguably, we'd like to start engineering within the next couple of weeks. So you you said next year. When is next year? What I would. Are I mean, talking? I hate to give you a, a time, but I'm I'm assuming somewhere in the second quarter. Somewhere in the second quarter. Well, so the, that's they're, they're up against a wall, and that um, construction in the winter. The permit the is going to automatically decrease their BOD loading in June. So mm -hmm. he's got a target date to work for. If he wants to keep. 18,000 gallons of discharge a day and sending out hundreds of barrels of beer per, no. per day, then he's really got to get his pre-treatments in and operational by early June so that he can Okay, well that's nine his, months, his so why are we talking about 18 BOD months? Hmm? What, it, that's nine months from now. Why are we talking about 18 months? I would go along with it for a less time, maybe 12 months. We'd be amenable to that, that's fine. Okay, I will, will go along with 12 months. So I'll make an amendment. I'm, I'm going to make an amendment to Rick's motion. Was or we, well, withdraw his motion. We can withdraw his I motion, then we can. I make will a new withdraw motion. my motion okay. and make a new one. All right. That it go along with this agreement, but make it 12 months instead of 18 months. I'll second that motion. All right, Mary Louise. Yeah. Once again, right, Pierce. Uh, the impact of increased industrial pollutant loading plays a significant role in the remaining remaining capacity of the wastewater treatment plant, mm -hmm. both for current and projected wastewater conditions. Based on the existing design capacity, the brewery may be contributing anywhere from 10 to 40 percent of the wastewater treatment plant's overall pollutant load capacity. Concentrated loading industrial users have a significant effect not only on the overall treatment plant capacity, but also on the potential future development in the town's sewer system. We're on kind of dangerous ground here. But we're also, go ahead, Jen. No, I okay, was, waiting. I was well, we waiting until everybody was done because you have a motion on the board. We have a motion it's on the second. It's a 12 month okay. permit versus the 18th that we've talked about. Correct. And that their letter requested that they be allowed 18,000 gallons in the permit versus 15, of which they will pay the wastewater development service charge. Correct. On those and then three. the last piece is they said that they'd paid over nine months. That I just want to get our months not all confused. 12 that's, month that's permit. That's all without increasing the BOD. With, all without increasing the BOD. Right. Which so is the that's target. And that will be before the board. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it'll be in the permit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that would be in With the no permit. No increase to the BOD. Right. As it is right now. They have to, they have to be able to pay for the system. The only yeah. way you're going to pay for the system is make more beer, and to do that you're going to have more volume. <laughs> well, that's exactly what we are. The BOD can be handled differently. You can exactly. either take it out of the system up there as was done before that, and truck it away, or you could build a pre-treatment system, which you're required to do under the permit anyhow. Right. Yeah, nine months. <laughs> okay. All right, so I have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Regina? Where'd she go? Regina? You're there? Lost her. The phone systems are great in this country. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm oh, wait a second. We'll I, get the I'm, semaphores out. We'll do a little. I'm opposed. Okay. All right. And Regina got lost in there somewhere. Yeah, she did. <laughs> That'll teach you. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed or dialed. <laughs>
I told you the systems were terrible around here. Ah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Welcome yeah. back. Ah. I was a yes, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we want to just make sure of that. That's why we, we, haven't, we haven't finalized the vote. So I have four yeses, one no. Right. So Thanks. Motion, motion passes. So for the, all right? Please. And we're and we're looking forward to work, this. Please. Continue to work with us, and we, and we, we want to work with you. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Thanks. Chairman, may I ask the manager if he can request from Wright Pierce a, um, a recap for us as to what exactly an industrial surcharge fee would entail? Mm -hmm. Well, that I'll refer to the director because he's in daily contact with them. <coughs> Certainly. Can speak we do with them? I just want yeah. specific. I would like to see if yeah. that fee is the way it should be, if it's too much or too little. Okay. Yes. You mean the, the, the five or something? The five. sewer access development charge, which is yep. something we're working with on the sewer. Yeah. And should that the be higher user or charge should it for be the But the industrial plan. user fee yep. is right. different. Two of them. Right. Yep. Right. Both. Yep. Right. He's asking for us to look at both of them. Both of them. Two different right. things. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's right. what I. Very good. Thank you. All right. Tell manager's report. Oof. Oh, Thank right. you, guys. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, work has commenced on the re reconstruction of Vans Lane and our. Deputy Director is here. Uh, motorists who regularly use the roadway should find alternate routes as frequent one-way conditions and road closures will be required. Work will continue into November. Final paving would be done next year. Tax Collector's Office will be closed this Wednesday, September 19th, so staff can attend required training on the state level. The State Department of Transportation will hold a public information meeting concerning the Hampton Harbor Bridge uh, project on Wednesday, September 26th at 7 p.m. in the Marston School Cafeteria. If you're interested, and I hope you are, please go. The State, uh, the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission will meet on October 10th at 10 a.m. in room 205 of the Legislative Office Building in Concord. Cam campaign signs for those no longer running in the November election must be taken down by this Friday, September 21st by state law. Um, and I know I've already been asked, uh, there's still a number of those uh, signs up and we will be having public works go and look <coughs> and see if they're out there and if they're not supposed to be there, they will be taken down if they're on town property. Dealing with the state's campaign people's own problem, we don't handle state property. And we can't do anything with uh, private property, right? If it's right? on private property, no. Uh, absolutely, positively, no. Um, I will comment, because I've been asked to, that uh, we had audio only for last Monday night's board meeting. <laughs> we lost the picture uh, because of a, tr a problem in the system. That has been corrected, and we have a number of backup uh, systems employed already. I want to make sure that we get set, uh, set up and tested for Monday, and we, we already are. Where That system is set up, it's working. And our staff people are doing a terrific job of that. Is this your website? Yeah. Because uh -huh. you have corrected it. I know people are going to be um, kind of a little <laughs> maybe confused by this, but we have already scheduled the annual town meeting, and we have scheduled Winnicott High yeah. School for the general election, the deliberative session, and for the town meeting in that's March. That's good. So that's already that's already confirmed, and we're we're off and running on that. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked to make comments on the uh, the calling in. Yes. Uh, we really don't have a lot of information. We have gathered a lot of the factual information that we have as far as town records are concerned. Mm -hmm. And they're all ready for town council to review when he gets back along with the statute one, uh, 250, 155B uh, to see what can be done. My understanding is that an executor or uh, has been appointed, I don't know if it's in Massachusetts or New Hampshire, but to take care of the business. We'll be talking to them as soon as council gets back. Uh, we want to secure the building for sure. Uh, things are bad down there. We want to make sure that there are no problems 
at all with that particular piece of property. But that's as much as I can tell you right now because we don't have any information from the property owners of those controlling the property. Yeah. Um, let's see, we talked about Ann's Lane, we talked about the state DOT, um, tax collector's office, the cancer cluster. I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Um, Any questions for the manager? Regina? I'm good, thank you. Right, yeah, uh, Fred, would you share this with the public and maybe we should put that on channel 22? The highlighted portion? Yes. Okay. You're receiving this email as a courtesy notice to advise that construction is expected to take place on Exeter Road, Route 27, beginning Monday, September 17th. Construction is anticipated to last two days and will impact a stretch of the roadway between the, including the bridges over Interstate 95 and Route 101. Two-way traffic and, and access to Liberty Lane will be maintained at all times. Yeah. My understanding is they're paving. Yeah, yeah, well you do want to watch out if you're going on the Exeter Road. Oh, yes. And, yeah, because you don't want to run that into will, any of that Tomorrow stuff. will be the last day for that. Now, are we under old business or new business? No, we're under the town manager's report. Oh, oh, okay, that was a good report. report. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Jim. Uh, fine, good. Rick, Thank okay, you. well, um, Fred mentioned about the Colony Motel yeah, that's issue. Fine. So, uh, you know, I think it is something that we should talk about once the lawyer is back and we can be finding yes. out more about it. But, I mean, I, I think that uh, if it's possible, it, if you're recommending that it be secured uh, in some way yeah. um, by what would you mean, like putting uh, plywood over all the doors and windows? Well, that may be a good start, uh, barricading the building up so access is difficult, and then actually surveying the building every day to find out whether or not anything is happening down there. Right. So, you know, that's what we need direction in. What, you know, what, how you want to do that, if that needs to be done, and I think if we do it, it should be kept. Uh, what the cost of it is so it can be passed on to the colony motel. The law provides for that automatically so mm -hmm. we will be looking to secure any money the town spends in any way. So at this time could we have the um, police chief make sure that he does normal checks on that building daily? They are looking at the building every day as far as yeah. walking around the exterior of the building and so forth. They only do that occasionally when they get a, a tip that somebody's been around there. Uh, the building has been repeatedly broken into, so I know the neighbors are keeping an eye on it. We want them to, and anything that's re anything they see, report it to the police immediately. We just can't take a chance in anything happening in that building. And so we'll have a, we'll probably the, the attorney will be back next week. He'll be back this Thursday, and we'll start. He already has all the material sitting on his desk. It's his first priority to take care of this matter. Just since we're talking about the colony there, I, I think we should, in general, look at our ordinances that deal with dilapidated property because there are other dilapidated property around town. And, and, and even to the point where Rick was talking about leaving trash barrels out that are filthy, rotten and stuff, what kind of authority do we have to s clean up and make sure the town's kept in an extremely clean manner? So I just think that should be you, something we do. You do have an ordinance that requires those barrels to be taken in after pickup every single day. Okay. There's, there's no question about that. And if they're not, you have the right, because they're town property, you have the right to confiscate them. Let me start yeah. enforcing I just rode uh, through York Beach yesterday. You should yeah, see we how have beautiful no it looks. Yes. Oh, yes. What was and, that, Regina? Well, we need code enforcement officers, right? Yes. 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 yes, we do. Yes. So that's something, yeah. that's another thing that we need to talk P about. Public Works has been trying to do it as they have severe problems with individual properties and they mm -hmm. have confiscated some of the bar barrels from various places. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a problem because, well, like this morning, those seagulls had those three yeah. barrels just <laughs> all over the place down there because the tops weren't on them and they were overly stuffed. Can't allow those things to happen. There were pictures on the TV tonight of uh, the Kennedy thing, uh, that 1,700 pictures they've come up with, and there was one picture of Rose Kennedy at uh, Nantastic Beach. It looked like York Beach did yesterday. You know, it looked beautiful. And they're yeah. doing it now, and yet we have... We should be able to do it here, but there are people, and I've, I've, I know I've mentioned this several times publicly. Um, we have people down the beach, 
and we've actually been to them and given them plastic bags and containers and stuff of this nature and asked them to tie the bags up and put it in the corner we'll take care of it later as long as it's not strewn all over the place and you go back two hours later and everything's strewn all over the place and the bags are thrown over in the corner it's time anything for us to move on that so we do need to put something like that on yep, the agenda that's fine do we have a littering ordinance we do have a littering ordinance um, the problem is we don't have enough police officers to enforce it uh, because you're going to have to issue a citation for each one of them. And again, it gets back to having code enforcement right. officers so that we can have somebody that Definitely. does work on it. Yeah. All right. Old business. I it's got something. Go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to, after Labor Day, are the town lots closed on the weekend or are they open? Well, we, we have rental passes right through the end of October no yeah. no I know that but I mean so they open for that or they're only open for special activities during the, the remainder of the time after the seafood festival well I'm just wondering because you know we we allowed I think reach the beach to use the parking lot yes this weekend yep. and we you know approved smutty nose right using all three of them what do we I mean I agree that we should be helping those organizations they bring people into town etc 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 but what are we losing in revenue I can tell you that of uh, course we, we've transferred the administration of the parking lot right. from recreation to the police department and uh, we are the police department is telling those organizations that next year it won't be free okay uh. okay because because uh, you know somebody said today that I think I was talking to uh, Christie, and she said maybe three thousand dollars what could have been made this weekend in parking very well all right and 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 the thing is Regina? yeah okay just want to make sure you, you know with, with these uh, <laughs> you know if we're letting people use them we should have people in the watch monitoring yeah and yes. that's going to cost us some money so actually it's going to cost us a lot less than we're 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 making so right. yeah so and we're going to provide for right. that next year okay good Anything else on the old business? I have old Good. business. Okay, that's why Okay, I asked. and I want to go into this because this week there's been some issues and I want to talk about it and it's something that we need to get so that it's very clear for everybody here at this table that they understand. Um, there seems to be a controversy over supposedly somebody uh, asked to be given an appointment and wasn't given an appointment. Um, and Th that part of that controversy is not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about what the policy is if you want an appointment. And I think that I understand it very clearly. Uh, and at least it's been this way the whole time I've been here. And um, number one, um, it is, uh, you know, first of all, it starts with what the uh, chairman whoever is chairman is in charge of how the meeting is run and um, he makes the policy uh, basically uh, and he decides on a weekly basis who is going to be on the agenda and I'm fine with that because that's the way it has always mm -hmm. been but it is very always been very clearly stated that if you want to be on the agenda you are to put it in writing and right. submit it by is it Wednesday or Thursday Wednesday night Wednesday night and you to be on for the following Monday right and then it's up to the chairman um, to decide if you're going to be on it doesn't go out to all of the other selectmen it is decided by the chairman and um, you know so uh, I don't really have a problem with it I do also, I always tell people that um, they need to write that letter to Christina's office, send it to right. Christina, yeah, absolutely. and um, when that letter arrives, it is uh, given out, uh, a copy of that record is given out and is put in the box of every single selectman. Yes. Right. And so that is when we all share the information at right. the same right. time. Right. right. Nobody is denied the ability and they don't, shouldn't be feeling that they don't know what's going on or they're the last one in town to find out what's happening because we're all found out we all find out when we go to pick up our uh, 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 information that's yeah. in the mail in our boxes uh, I, so I, I, then I also tell people when they come to me 
that it wouldn't hurt if they come to the public comment and ask to be on the agenda. Right. Correct. And yeah. that way they can make sure that their request has been seen and vetted by the town. Mm -hmm. And you know, we do our business here yep. on Monday night, right. no other times. We have our ability to uh, look what comes in, bring up our, uh, have all of our opinions about what's going to be done. Um, also, if the selectmen want to have something on the agenda, like I have mentioned tonight, more than once tonight, that I think that we need to do this. I rely on Rusty or whoever is the chairman right. to decide when they can fit it in because it might have to be fit, it, fit in right. over the next month or so. And um, if Rusty forgets, guess what? I'm bringing it up again. <laughs> and then I'm really going to yeah, yeah. go over and over again until it comes to the way that I yeah. want it to be. Yeah. And uh, if the board decides after I brought it up that I'm wrong, then they can say, they can agree to say that I, I'm wrong and I okay. shouldn't be allowed to bring that matter forward. So, you know, that's how it's decided what gets on the agenda. It's completely the right of the chairman to decide who is accepted to that night's meeting. It's up to the chairman to decide how long people can talk during public comment. Mm -hmm. And it's up to the chairman to decide if the room is filled with people and um, tonight we have to make it, they can only talk for two minutes instead of four or three or whatever it is right. because of time. So the chairman has to decide that. And that is what I, this is how the meetings have been for the last 14 years I've been. There's been no exceptions to this. And that's the way that I'm anticipating it's going to continue. Um, also, where we do have a new town clerk coming, I'm um, asking that the new town clerk be put on the agenda so that she can bring forth what, how, uh, different issues that she might want to, yep. um, uh, how she wants to run her uh, uh, office. Uh, because I believe she has the same right as the chairman does to run that office the way that she wants to run the office. That's how I understand Absolutely. it. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and that includes the hours that are uh, being done. So I think that um, Shirley Doheny is now going to be in charge. Uh, I have no problem if uh, she wants to come in um, maybe one of the nights before Jane Cipher leaves and they come in jointly, or do we want to just wait to when there's the new sheriff in town named Shirley Doheny, yeah. have her come in on her own and tell us how she plans on running that town clerk's office. Yep. And it's up to her to do it, and it's up to her to make the decisions because she'll be the new boss. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'd like to say. You're absolutely right, Rick. As a town clerk, when you're elected or you are appointed to fill in that right. remaining term, they have control over that office. Yep. They have control over the hours. They have the control over their staff. And we don't basically have no control over that. Mm -hmm. No control whatsoever. The only thing the staff has to deal with is they are, are, are union employees and they have a contract. And so they have to deal, Shirley will have to deal with mm -hmm. that being the union contract yep. of how she can deal with that. Yeah. And as far as having any meetings in private or um, you know before the meeting starts or after the meeting starts, there's a strict guidelines on um, what we discuss. And it's not, there are no exceptions to it ever. It all falls under 91A. Yes, and no one's having any meetings or they shouldn't be outside of this Monday night and I say we do our business here on Monday night in front of the public, and I would like to see it stay that way. Well, I like to say that I'll meet whoever I want, whenever I want. I'm an individual selectman, and denying someone to come in, whether or not we say no or not, because they wanted to be on the agenda, so people knew the, uh, that they were on the agenda, and not allowing them to come in is wrong. I don't care how long it's been done like that. It's wrong, especially when it's another elected official. Well, that's, that's all I have to there say. There was, uh, I think it's uh, that time to put it out here that the per, uh, no one applied in writing to the chairman 
and that's the way it is. And you may think it's wrong, but that's the way it's been done, and that's the way it's going to be done. Right. And, yeah, and but any, any person has a right to come to you, 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 or mm -hmm. Regina, and you can have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. There is no, no, nothing that is determined right. by that. The way you determine that is by you have you put in a letter in writing to have an appointment, and I've never denied anybody that's put in a letter in other than that's an elected official. And it's very clear that this is what it is. So elected officials have to do it too, or they yeah, need to- Everybody. Yeah, and an elected official can come here any night during public comment and request something. But there are rules, this is the way it's been, and it's the way I would like to see it continue. Any other questions on that? Anything else on the old business? New business? We have uh, I, Regina. I like to reserve office hours for Tuesdays, the first and third from uh, 1 to 3. I've already talked to Christina. She seems to think it will be okay. So what are you talking about office hours, Regina? Uh, office hours so that I can be available when I'm at, and everyone knows I'll be at the town hall, whoever would like to come see me. They won't have to call me. That will be my regular office hours, and I'll be doing work. And if anyone is interested, I will be there between 1 and 3. I have a problem with this. We have office hours every Monday night here. And if people want to come, they need to come here to this Monday So meeting. I can't invite them to come to the town hall? No, Fine, I'll you do can meet with them shop. somewhere else like everyone else has all through the years. I have a problem with that. Uh, well, you know, if you we're all going to have office hours, I think it's something that we all have to discuss, but I don't see why we should have office hours in the town hall. So that, uh, because I'm on tape right now for some people that only watch us on Monday night. And if they come down to the town hall on a regular basis and they know I'm going to be there on a Wednesday afternoon. I think it infringes on my ability to uh, be a selectman, and I think that you want to meet with them somewhere, go meet with them. But tell them to come here on Monday night and bring whatever they have forward to bring it here at this meeting. That's what we're here for. Mary Louise, can I meet on that? Mr. Chairman, forget about it. Okay. I'm fine with that. It. Okay. okay. I'm, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask if we can set up a meeting uh, with uh, the Channel 22 Cable um, mm -hmm. Committee. Uh, I have been increasingly concerned about the quality of um, the, the notices that are placed on Channel 22. I'm not going to get excited about losing the picture last week, although that was difficult, but uh, I have mentioned to Mr. McCain a couple of times that I had a problem, especially with that Legionnaire's disease notice that was orangey. You couldn't read it. A lot of older people in the town of Hampton do not own computers. They rely on Channel 22 for their information. Um, just for an example, I sat down last night and turned on Channel 22 just to see the, the ads in the top right-hand corner. Um, Hobbs House Saturday Food Pantry, etc. Very good, very clear, legible. You can read what they do. The next three, Exeter Adult Ed, uh, did you know that parking, whatever, and or a park, living near a park enhances your value of your property? And uh, private well, something about private wells. Safer Cats has two notices on there. Both of them are very intelligible. You can you can read the things, um, but the uh, uh, the Rockingham Community Action stuff, fuel and electric assistance, public health and Legionnaires. You couldn't read them. I don't know why we are wasting time and money. Um, Mr. McCain suggested that I meet with Rick Cantor, which I did Thursday morning. And he explained to me that some of the things that are put on Channel 22 are created, for example, by the state of New Hampshire. I guess the Legionnaires disease um, uh, memos that were put up uh, were forwarded to our cable committee by the state. And it was useless because people couldn't read them. I was sitting six feet from the screen. I have good vision. 
I couldn't read the darn thing. It was all mushed together. So I did ask, um, I, because I didn't realize we got some of these notices coming in from other well, a agencies. Lot of, a lot of these notices do come in, and we have requirements that they are supposed to follow. But now, you, maybe we haven't been following those, and maybe we need to do a little bit of just. Now, I there, there's, wait a there's, there's, no Jim, re, there's no reason to have a meeting with the cable Jim. committee. Wait, let me finish. No, there's no reason. I was, I that's good. I stole the floor. There's no reason to, to have a meeting with the cable committee. The cable group is working on that, and it's just verbose here going on and on about something that's being worked on that I, they realize is a problem, and they, they will attempt to fix it. But for us to have a meeting with the cable committee is foolishness. Okay, let me finish what I was saying, please. Um, I did talk, uh, I left a message for Chief Sawyer after I talked with Rick Cantor. And he did call me back in the afternoon and he was on his way to a meeting uh, with Chief Ayotte and whoever from the state. And uh, I explained to him that I had asked the um, cable uh, representatives, if they get an indecipherable uh, message, say, from the state, uh, just we should just send it back to the state and say, hey, give us something that's clear, white background, black print, and get it over with. If we have outbreaks, and I know the police department was stretched thin with all that Legionnaires stuff, people should understand that. That is, there are many individuals in this town, it's their sole source of information so, and we need to have it more clear all right so what I would say that we do we instruct the cable committee that when they get a to follow the guidelines they have and if they need to change the guidelines to make them more clearer right then they need to do that so I don't think we need to have a meeting with okay. them I think we but we need to tell okay. them to because I did stop take, looking at their own guidelines I did take it upon myself to go in and talk because I've been concerned you can't read a lot of that stuff right and there's no sense wasting space putting it up there that's fine so I I'm more bit I of old we, business too we do that this okay. is kind of feel, fills in on this um, now I have been told mr. Welch that um, the <clears throat> Uh, sea Ranch Motel has ah. been cleared of having anything to do with that Legionnaire's disease. Is this true? I've received no such message. You haven't? Because I heard that at the, uh, <coughs> that there was a message that went out. I thought I heard it went to the Chamber of Commerce oh. that it had nothing to do with the... I, I think I that we it need to... It hasn't come to us. Okay. I think that we need to look because if that is the, the way it is, I think that we need to uh, go out of our way yeah. to let people know that somebody was maligned uh, about being accused of being a source of that Legionnaire's disease. Now if that, because I understand, I was told that the uh, results of the testing have come in and that I could be wrong, but I was told that the Sea Ranch Motel absolutely was not uh, uh, guilty of having Legionnaire's disease. And if that's the fact, we need to sing it from the rooftops. So what that I'm just not that privy to that information correct. if it did come in. That should come from the uh, DES, Environmental Services? Actually, it should come from the State Health Department. Right. Well, and that should come also from CDC. So if yeah, they right. have some information, yeah. we can ask them if they have that information. Yeah. Can we'll just we check find out? Morning. We yeah. need to know where what it is so that we can let the public know where that came from. And, you know, I mean, it's obvious that there were some people that had an issue. But if there were people that were accused of having an issue and they didn't, I think it's time that it be reported well, he, in the newspaper and everywhere else. He, he can ask for that, uh, but again, that was their determination. They put that information out. That was not a press release that we put out. Well, that was. Yeah. The, uh, if they know it's something health, different, yeah. they, we can ask them yeah. if they have. Those we'll businesses find out. are in our town, and we need to broadcast it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, you mentioned earlier uh, on the uh, Legionnaires' disease that we uh, shows another instance where we really need a code enforcement officer and I do hope we have the warrant article for next March but when I saw the list and we all got lists I never it never occurred to me that there were that many businesses that had hot tubs and so forth that they're required to have inspected by the state 
and poor Kevin Schultz is running around doing this. We, we need a code enforcement officer desperately. Well, but that state, list yeah. was a whole page single space. I, I never knew there were so many hot tubs in New Hampshire, let alone. Well, if the state's supposed to do it, well, that doesn't mean we're supposed, right. to it's not it. supposed to do it. Yeah. They got motion to adjourn at 2130. Right. But people aren't doing it. So any closing comments? No. Yeah, I have a motion to adjourn at 2130. 2130, all those in favor, uh, second. I'll second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Aye. Thank you very much, Channel 22. Aye. It was a Thank night. you, Regina. Regina. I'm sorry for jumping up in the middle of the meeting there. Yeah, what happened? But, well,